We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, could we um, delete the update EMS roster? Yes. And um, I would recommend to the board that the budget discussion be moved to afternoon business. That way, we can. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Next, approved minutes. The minutes of November 4th, 2019. I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 4th, 2019. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. The minutes of November 13th, 2019. Do we have them? They were. No, you do not. Where's the agenda? Well, that was the site walk. That was the site walk, but there's not, not much here for that. Not much to the meeting. The right. Thing. So I'll add that back onto the next agenda. Okay. All right, next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? So, yeah, go ahead, sir. The uh, last select board meeting that I was in, we've all read the paper and just glossed over what, <coughs> what the policy change was all about, and I'd like to know why that wasn't important information to give to the town. What, what are you talking about as far as the policy change? You know what I'm talking about. In the paper, it was talking about Todd Thomas. Uh, not giving written notice that he was conducting business outside of his position. Right. Why was it not important to relay that to the town for public record? It wasn't a matter of that. It was, it was something that we have been doing for 12 years, 13 years, a certain way we've been doing it. It was, uh, on our part, we didn't realize it was a policy. But that the person, one of the people who was involved in making the policy is Dan. Well, I, I was on the board too, as it turns out, but okay, so I actually don't think, I actually don't think we were. The, the policy that says um, a written letter had to be written, you know, had to be a written letter if someone sought a second job. Okay, that was sent to us as a recommendation from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that we just you know, identified and adopted. It was sent to us and we followed the model because they recommend that to towns, towns of all sizes. It may or may not fit for Morristown. In reality, it doesn't because there's only, what, three employees or something that, that it would affect. No, there's more than that. More than that. Anybody that's on non-collective bargaining. Non-collective bargaining, right. Correct. So, as, as far as Dan had been here, and I was on the board too and Brian was too, um, we would never required that, to have it be in writing, because we always did it where if somebody wanted to have a second job, whereas I, I, won't pick, I guess I'll pick on Erica, for example, she, has, she does pizza business on the side. You know, that's really not a conflict of interest of any kind that we'd ever found. So she let Dan know that she was doing that verbally. That's fine for us. We don't, we don't have a problem. We don't think it has to be done in writing. Um, and the same for Todd. Todd has a private consulting business that he helps other towns with zoning or different issues like that. As long as it doesn't affect Morristown or in no way, in fact, he, he actually screens it. He won't go work for a town that's going to end up in an issue that involves Morristown somehow. You know, anything that he did was a long ways away. You know, and it's no problem for us. We don't, as a board, we're like, you know, as long as it's not a conflict of interest of any kind, I don't think there's any reason to have it in writing. No. The reason you have it in writing is if it is a problem, if it's, if it's a problem, Dan would send a letter saying, look, this is a conflict of interest. But it's the way it's happened, Todd's come to Dan and said, look, I'm doing this. We don't think it needs to be in writing. Well, it's that's a, understandable from what you're saying. Right. Except that the people that credential Todd say it in their code of conduct. Um, that's not true. That's not true. So the newspaper was lying then? No, I yeah, but I think you need to read what the code of conduct is. And it's you know, um, the the ethics said a salaried employee should. And you know, when there's already a conversation 
with people that uh, did the ethics piece of that um, at the Planning Association. And although it's not settled, but Todd is actually not a salaried employee, he's an hourly employee. Yeah, it's unfortunate that um, all the facts aren't brought to light. You know, Tommy, Tommy contacted the board, he sent an email to everybody, and I answered him. In fact, I called him and talked to him. And he took a small part of our conversation and printed it, you know, which is unfortunate. Uh, because there was a lot more to it that actually was accurate data as far as we've been on the board. He's right that there was changes done, I believe it was July 29th of 2009 when we changed the policy, but I think a lot of that part was already in there anyway. It wasn't something we wrote. There's been revisions, there was another revision in 2004, there's been a bunch of them over the years. We didn't pull that part out at that point, and we should have because that's not how we did it. But we're the ones that decide what that policy is, like I said in the paper. We're the ones that decide it, and we can decide to change it as we need to. A good example that Eric brought up is Title 23 of the Motor Vehicle Laws of Vermont. There are so many open laws there that aren't even ap applicable to what people do nowadays. But they don't get changed until there's a problem that comes up. You know, and then it would be so painstaking for us to go through every single thing in our in the laws or, or our policies. They're not they're not laws. They're policies that we we write. Um, we change them as we see fit. We change them when it, when something comes up. It's not like we did anything wrong. Well, true. Well, we were violating you know our own policy that we put out. But we also were carrying on that way for 12 years or something like that. So it's not that we're hiding anything from the town. That situation well, I mean, it clearly wasn't straightforward with what was going on. Well, we not didn't select board meeting either. We didn't well, talk about it in the meeting that. because we'd all talked about it outside the meeting. Right, but I mean, it's the town that's involved. How is how is that? It, it was a policy that that we put for the staff. Right, but you're talking about an employee that routinely shows up for questionable conduct and for all of these things. That's his name has been in the paper that, several yeah, times over right the last, his name has been in the paper several times. And each of those are an independent issue. Each one of those should be seen unto itself, not collectively. Right, sure. And I think that but when you have a series of events like that. It can be misconstrued as a problem employee. I would not label any of our staff in any of our offices as a problem employee. So just because the name shows up in the newspaper, and again, the my one looking at is behind the articles. I'm seeing the same name in all these articles, and the same question with the same name attached to it coming in my email. So I'm going to say, to your point, that his name routinely showing up in the newspaper articles does not convict him of a thing. I'm not we take each of these issues independently, we look at it, we balance it out against the good of our employees, our staff, and our town, and we make a decision based on that. And that's where we're at with this. It would, we were violating our own policy. We changed it because we didn't feel it was necessary and important for our staff to give us a letter telling us they were doing something outside for employment. They're trying to better themselves. They're trying to increase their income for their families. I don't have a problem with any of that. If it becomes a problem as a conflict of interest, we will address that, certainly. We haven't had a conflict of interest to go address. I, I'd like to just speak that I know I was privy to the emails and I called Dan to talk about it because I was confused and I didn't understand what was going on. And he explained it to me that the information that Tommy sent us was that Todd was applying, and I'm, I'm not going to get all the, the uh, terms correct, he was applying to, to be uh, this, the job that he's applying for. He had to go through the state, Secretary of State of, the, of, the, of Vermont. And he had to go through that process and list the town offices as his business office. Then, and that's, that was mandated, then he went within a few days and changed it to his personal. Can, can, I, can I explain that? Number one, I, I get, get a little uncomfortable talking about personnel issues in an open meeting um, because, you know, I think there are some things that that's, I, I can, I'm willing to explain, but I think there's a limit on what I'd recommend to the board that the board discuss in an open meeting. If there's complaints, I think, they should be brought forth to the board, but I also think you know um, they should be discussed just like with any employee discussed in, in, in 
executive session uh, to afford the employee that privacy when we're talking about personnel issues because those are a privacy issue. Um, at the Secretary of State's office, if you are already registered as an agent, and Todd was at the time registered as an agent of MAP, I think everybody knew that he was at that point in time, if your address is already in that database, you can't just go in and change it if you're doing something different like he was for his own business. He did confer with the Secretary of State's office and they said go ahead and do it and then come back in a couple days and change it so that you, you kind of had to push it through and then go back and change that. So he really didn't intentionally use his town email, email or business address. He wanted to put his personal stuff in there. The system would not allow him to do it. He was following the direction of the Secretary of State's office to be able to register his own private business as anybody has a right to do. And that was explained to Tommy, but it wasn't printed that way. You know, there's a lot of this stuff is like one-sided. I've learned. Well, since that's I've been why on I'm board. here then is to get answers because the same name keeps popping up right. time and again. And we have to ask yourself, why is that? I you know, know that's why I'm here tonight. Yeah, I understand. But we we're trusted by the town, the town's people, the taxpayers to make decisions for the town, to, to help manage the staff, to manage the budgets, to look at things that happen. They, we were elected and we're trusted to do it. And we do it the best that we can. We've got five people here making decisions, seeing everything. We don't always agree on things, but we come up with the right decision in all of our minds we do. You know, we, we do our best. And it's difficult sometimes because it seems like we're not being transparent or not explaining everything. And we really do. Anybody can call my phone or anybody's phone and ask this question about anything that happens, you know, unless it's a sensitive matter that we can't talk about. Um, and it's just unfortunate that, and, and I will say that a couple of the things that, that Todd has done in the past that, that were, were maybe not right makes him be a magnet for everything that he does everything in the past, present, future, he's going to be under the microscope. And that's too bad because, and I said this to Tommy, but he's never printed this. I've been on the board for 12 years, almost 13. And in that time, Todd Thomas, probably one of the best things I ever did for the town with Brian is to hire Todd Thomas. The second one was to hire Dan Lindley. He's done more for the town of Morrisville than anybody else has in the last at least 20 years. And it's unfortunate, but you know, sometimes bad behavior in one, at one time or another time can negate anything good that's been done. But if you, if you go to these business owners and the town people that he's been dealing with over the last 10 years or 12 years, like Howard Menashe, or like Gary Nolan, or like Garrett Herchak, or like Graham Mink, you talk to just a dozen, I could name dozens of people that deal with Todd, and they tell me this guy has done more for Morrisville than anybody else. We by far have had glowing you know, input about him and his conduct and what he's done and the people that he talks to and deals with every single day. And um, I think it's unfortunate that one, one bit of uh, bad behavior you know, can really negate everything. And, and it's sad for me to see all this stuff in the paper all the time, over and over and over again. You know, I feel like he's targeted. I, I said that to Tommy. I, I'd say it in the paper, you can write it down, and Tommy will be calling me tomorrow. You know, but that's how I feel. It's, it's just too bad that it's that way. But we certainly will explain anything that happens in open meeting, unless it's a sensitive issue, and we can't. But something that was printed in the paper, we're more than happy. And I, and I do feel bad a bit because we did vote to change that policy without really talking about it in a meeting, but we all have been up on it and we all talked about it and you know made phone calls, made emails, talked to each other you know, before the meeting. So we knew what we were gonna do, but that, that didn't feel good to the audience that was listening, like, oh, they made that change, didn't even talk about it. So I understand what you're saying. So I, I hope that helps. A little. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's move to uh, liquor control. Do we have any? No. Thank you. Full business. Discuss and approve Belanger Lane as a town road. 
Do you want to talk about that? <coughs> Kevin, I think it meets all your criteria. Yes. It, it, like that. Everything is right to what we've asked. Ray has done a fantastic job of Brown Road. So I think you know, from that perspective, it meets the town's policy as far as road acceptance. Make a motion to approve Belanger Lane of the town road. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I would just. Effective date. Um, I, I think you know today could be the effective date. I think the residents, you know, one of the things that should qualify that the residents also need to deed that town or the the, the property to the town. I think they've already discussed that. They know that. Um, I, don't, you know, I don't think there's it's just a matter of getting it done. Um, I did talk to an, the owners of another road that the town had accepted a while back, and they didn't find it to be a painful process to get the deed and everything put together. So I just wanted to go back and double check that. I know if you have more of it, you have to go through your bank, and, but other than that, um, it certainly meets all the qualifications. But I would like to see the property deeded to the town. So, so if it snows tonight, Kevin's going to plow it, right? The rain is going to be fun in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say after we vote. I'm going to amend my motion to include effective uh, Tuesday, November 19th, and, uh, with the understanding that the property will be deeded to the town. Second that. Okay. Any further discussion? I think that will be reflected in the minutes because that was all discussed now. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to thank everybody, like Ray, for all the work they've done to try to make this happen. Uh, the other adjoining landowners. Down. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's passed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll do new business. Discuss. You guys are easy to work with. Yeah. Discuss Morristown pickleball league. That's me. <laughs> I can see you're kind of I excited. See you're go smiling. ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I haven't seen you on the board. Uh, I'm Jude Crashaw, and I represent the uh, Pickleball League. Um, mostly seniors, but we do welcome younger people to play. <laughs> Though I can beat them pretty good. <laughs> yeah, she's um, pretty good. We, um, we have no place to play in Morrisville because all of the facilities, the gyms, and everything are used for either men's basketball or sports for the kids. So we're looking for places. We found a place in Wilcutt and they asked us, well, do you have a, um, a certificate of coverage for insurance? Um, they, a lot, they said, yes, we, you can play with us, but we need that certificate. We don't have a certificate. So a couple of, several of us came to the meeting, went to the meeting a month ago, I guess it was, of the uh, Parks and Rec team. And I've also called the Vermont um, League of Cities and Towns, and they explained to me that we, to get a certificate, so we can play other places, we need to be an official group under the auspices of the Parks and Rec. They also explained then that it's a very simple process of, because you're already covered with insurance, that we would then be covered as an official league group under the Parks and Rec. So I'm here to um, ask for that so we can keep playing and be active. <coughs> um, the town has greatly been playing at Morrisville um, a People's Academy in the summer, and it's been great. They've allowed us to paint pickleball lines on their two courts. Um, so that's been great, but now only Hyde Park has a, a time for us in the mornings, Sunday mornings, and, um, and their gym is really little. Yeah, small gym. It doesn't fit many of us. Can anybody play? Yeah. 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 Come on yeah. down. Yeah, we've advertised it's in the front porch form. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Anyone can easy. play, any ability, any age. It's the fastest growing senior sport, believe it or not. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and um, when I was talking to the, they kept, the phone, I was talking to someone today at the Vermont League, I can never get all those in it, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and I talked to Pam, who's apparently in the senior, a senior um, for the insurance, and she basically said, what, pickleball, why don't you go south like everybody else does to go to Florida? <laughs> and I said, because we want to stay in Morrisville, and we want to play here, and um, 
I have about 50 people on my email list, but it drastically reduces once winter comes because we don't have a facility. So now, the, the big issue right now, the initial issue is a certificate of coverage so we can play because we do have a space. The bigger issue is dedicated space for seniors who also welcome juniors to, um, to stay active all year round, outside and inside in Morristown. How many people play? It depends. Like right now in the winter, because we only have room for one net, it's come down to six people. We've had, we only have two nets at People's. And we've had 15, 15 20, 20 pe people right. waiting for the two nets. Right. So um, four dedicated outdoor pickleball nets would be fabulous. Um, when I first mentioned <coughs> this, um, I was, um, I contacted United Way and and they, within a week, they bought us two nets, all the paddles, and the balls, which is about $500, $600. So we could set up the nets in gyms, if we can find the gyms. Pretty cool. It's a great sport. It's pretty amazing. I don't know any other sport that I can play with an 87-year-old playing next to a 12-year-old, literally. Um, yeah, it's it's like cheap. I played in Brazil at the Olympics, after the Olympics, you know, on the beach, and it was so much fun. I'm like, why don't we do this in the U.S.? Well, we, we set it up at Rocktoberfest two years ago, and we, Scott happened to walk by another one of our players who was, the problem is you really become addicted, <laughs> but it's a good yeah. addiction. It's competitive. Um, it was very, some people are competitive. Some people. Some people. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it's really healthy, but it's bigger than that for me. Um, yes, it's a senior sport, but anybody can play. So it's not only for the health, it's really a community builder. And people have a lot of fun. And so it's a great way to interact with people that you would never be, perhaps. And uh, I just had an email from somebody from Hardwick saying, I hear you're at Pickleball in Morrisville. I'm, some of our members <laughs> drive to Montpelier, Burlington, St. Albans Cambridge. to play. Um, so I really think there there is great potential for Morrisville. It's going to be a cult following. Absolutely. <laughs> is there a cost to the town? Me? Is there a cost to the town? The co I mean, there's no cost for the, my understanding is that there's no cost for the certificate of insurance if we were an official group because you're already covered. And Pam and the VL said um, we would just be under that umbrella, um, so there's no cost for that specific thing. There would be a cost once you build us dedicated pickleball courts, but that's <laughs> down the road. I think they also they, didn't you need a certificate of life or um, a waiver signed too from members of the league? Um, all, all, well, all the we'll put principles. Oh, you mean from the oh, Vermont, yes. Vermont? Yeah, well, Gordon Beale, I think you, you needed each individual that wanted to be a member of your league to sign a waiver. Oh, that'd be no problem. So, yeah. um, and I think Tina's already got the waiver, and so there would have to be a waiver signed oh, by okay. the individual. So, um, other than that, I think it's also been through the rec committees mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, yeah, we discussed it again tonight. We're, we're not opposed. To it, but we're not. We have not taken. We have not taken an official vote on it yet. We kind of need guidance from you guys. We're such a new forming committee, and we don't have any groups under it. Everybody else does their own thing, and we're sort of supporting and getting the word out about other recreation groups. We're not really ready to take on our own groups, um, and we have more. <laughs> it just is opening a lot of questions and um, the precedence of all right, if we take on pickleball first then you know what parameters would need to be set so that if the next group that comes to us we're being equal to everybody um, so we just <coughs> discussed it away but didn't make any Sarah, <laughs> it falls under the mission of the Parks and Rec, if you read your fabulous mission statement. I mean, it's definitely we where we would like mission. to go to, but we're, you know, we're a small forming group that we're lucky when we get 
quorum. We just had to re-change our meeting times and hope that we would get enough people to go. So we, we kind of tabled it tonight to see what how you guys talked about say, it. I, I question uh, other groups that already exist, like basketball. Yeah, that's where our that questions That kind of thing, they're playing in other communities and their gymnasiums. We now need to cover them for insurance purposes. There are other, I'm using the word golf, I don't want to sure it's the right term, but we have other groups that exist that we play softball, on some softball. Are we going to have to extend these certificates of insurance versus this the school and walk it? Is it is it something they're requiring? I mean, townships aren't requiring that. Uh, Johnson State College requires it if we wanted that they have space, but we need to have insurance there. So it's I think it's across the so board. To me the question is how far reaching is this? Is it just in this one group or is this going to turn into all groups who play <coughs> non-school sanctioned sport. I don't know how you describe it. I mean, the whole concept of just, where, where does, does this stop here with a pickleball team? Or do we now have to extend the same level of coverage to every other team that exists that plays in other towns? I don't know the answer. I would think it'd be as, as we get solicited. What do you think? Uh, sorry. I don't think the group would be coming to us if, if uh, <coughs> being asked. They wouldn't have a need for that. I don't know that uh, the men's league here in town is required to have uh, the teams that use the Copley gym. They don't have to have insurance. But it's just and um, right, 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 and we don't need insurance at the high Park gym. Right. Wolcott is the only one that has asked us. We can't get into the Morrisville facility so, uh, because it's busy, so I, I don't even know if they asked for that. Yeah. And the, and the sport itself, if you look at basketball, or if you look at uh, uh, any of the kids' soccer and things like that, you have, there's a lot more injuries in that area, and usually it's, uh, so that's where insurance is really important too. So the liability insurance policy that we've extended cover <coughs> what circumstances? Well, once again, you know, is, you know, what's the liability of the town? You know, it, so to be, what would we be liable for if they're going someplace else, they're playing on somebody else's facility? It would be relatively difficult to say that we would be liable for something in those set of circumstances. That's the other reason why they want the, the, the waiver signed by the individuals that are going to be a part of the league. Um, so I mean, the, the risk for liability of the insurance company, from what I've read, is fine with it. There, there's really not a lot of liability associated for the town here. They're not on town property. You know, the, the risk is pretty low. I think they they said that if it was football, you know, contact sport, <coughs> they'd they'd be a little bit more concerned about it. But the, the liability to the actual to the town is, is pretty limited in this particular case. No increase in this insurance policy or anything along those lines. I think it would be important to maintain a roster and make sure that we have that and the waivers signed before they're part. Because this is a, at this point in time, we've become an official town of Morristown Sports League. And I think we would you know, need to know that all of a sudden we get a new individual that shows up at the Wolcott Gym you know, to play. We would need to make sure that their waiver is signed before they became a part of that official league. And there's a specific waiver, correct? Yes. Yeah, I think, Dave, you already have that, don't you? I did. And yeah. the LCT says that it does limit um, the exposure and liability to the town, but potentially there is some, just so some. that you know. Because I um, drafted the waiver based on a walking group that was going to meet at the library and then walk around town, potentially, and then meet back at the library. And that's what they say, have sign a waiver, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're off the hook if something right. happens. It just limits. You know, it, it limits the exposure more to have that. I would recommend that if it's something that, that um, the select board wants to take on, that they um, register through the new My Rec program that we have, that the families sign up for summer uh, rec because we can build the waiver in and then they can sign up at home and fill out the waiver. and. Basically, the pro they are filling it out. The program manages it, so that it's not 
because we don't have a paid parks and rec person. It's um, all volunteers. So then it's who who's going to manage manage it. So if it's all run through the program, then it's minimal time. I would just have to create the program within the program. What's your time? What are you looking at for time on this? Time on this? Um, last week? Yeah. <laughs> we can, we that can was my assumption. Yeah. Well, they're, the principal is lovely and they're holding us the space for two mornings, but the men's basketball league is chomping at the bit to use the gym. There it is. So, unless we get a certificate quickly, we're going to be kicked out again. I mean, I love men, but <laughs> just not men in basketball. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, the sooner the better we can play. So how soon can we do this, Sarah? Well, tax day was over, so I guess I have a little <laughs> bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> to create the program. Um, I don't know. You, you tell me. We can improve it, you know. Would it take you a week, you think? Probably. I'll have to figure out what we, we have need to make sure the way our VLCT is. What are you going to say? I share similar concerns to Eric as far as what this means, you know, how we're going to structure this going forward. Um, I do think it's a great thing to do. Um, be able to to do under under the uh, the rec. Um, I wish we had known about this a little sooner to give us a little time to kind of vet a few things because uh, it's always a little challenging. Work. None of us are. I don't know, maybe some of you. I don't know. I'm not an expert on what on this at all. So um, and you know we have the the rec committee, but they're very new. And, We've been talking to the town so. a couple of years now, Trisha and everybody. So it's the first time I've been on the board for a couple of years now, and this is the first time I've heard about it. Um, so uh, it's it's just it's hard for us to make a decision with five minutes of information yeah. uh, when there's a, a timeline. Uh, that being said, I'm a huge fan, and if we think we could pull it off, I think it's. I think the rec committee would need to start to think about hard about what that means going forward. Um, I would maybe make a proposal that we have a um, you know like a six month charter of this uh, trial of this. Uh, well, maybe for the so for the well, winter. Six months. Last year was a little longer, but. Uh, the Marstown bike, Mars bike program, is that covered by the town? No, that's no longer. You mean what the, the renting of the bikes? Defunct? Defunct. Oh, okay. So I, I agree, too. I, I wonder if we postponed it for two weeks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, we can move in there for this weekend. Well, what I'm saying is if, if you had a, I mean, a consensus that we're Definitely for it, mm -hmm. but just to give Sarah, make sure that it's something they can do and make it work, and also make sure that we're, again, I I like to, if I let somebody over here do it, and somebody else comes to us, I'd like to be able to help them out too. So I don't want to take one and all of a sudden we get five more and say, oh my God, then we're in trouble. That was, that was more of our concerns with yeah. Park and Rec. I'm, I mean, I'm speaking for the group, but I, fe I felt like in the discussion, we all were in favor of it. They're just logistics. Like we didn't want to so that's why I walk into something that we couldn't sustain or that wasn't if, in the best interest of the town. And if we did, a, if we approved it this evening with the with a six month trial period, uh, with an understanding that there's going to take some time, it doesn't mean that you're going to walk right. away with a waiver. <laughs> Would that be sufficient? I mean, you don't know that. Right? I don't know without. Well, it's up there, so and then it's gray areas because we don't have parks and rec. So, you know, I sit on the board, but did you ask the LCT if they had any other insurance programs? Because they used to have a tulip program 
that was for groups like that that were not necessarily town groups that needed insurance for a specific period of time or whatnot. And I'm not sure if they still have that program or not, but they used to have it. Right, so no, I didn't ask them that, but I'm sure, I don't know what that would cost. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we don't charge anything, and mm -hmm. we really want it to be, I mean, I even have extra paddles that the United Way has bought for us, so we want it to be really affordable. Um, and so, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't answer it. I don't know what they I didn't know she might have mentioned something to you. Tool, no, tool is very, very site, site and day site specific. specific. So it's, it's, site, it's not a broad coverage. Tulip is something that if you wanted to, um, no, I'm going to use the wool cut gym. Say you wanted to have a, a craft fair there one oh, day. Right, you right. could get insurance for that day to cover that one particular oh, event. But it would okay. be difficult, I think, for Tulip to cover a broad spectrum like that. So it's usually for something very, very specific. <coughs> so um, and I think they still do offer that. But no, it's, 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 it's very specific in what it covers. Gary, you had a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the, uh, I'm a charter member of the Hyde Park Rec Committee, and we've got three softball fields in Garfield that we use, and the town of Hyde Park only requires a waiver, a roster and a waiver. Uh, I was wondering if... Yeah, I, you, that's... The we town of Wilcott won't accept that? They, they want the certificate. They want the certificate. Yeah, we've asked that. That uh, well, yeah, surprised us, too. Like uh, we, outdoor, maybe there's a we played softball at the Wolcott and never had to provide a certificate of insurance. Outside. Outside. Yeah. Inside. 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 school. Yeah, it's inside, school. I, I think, town. yeah. I wonder if the school's requirement is not the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said you could yeah. do anything you want mm -hmm. out on the ball field. Yeah. <coughs> I would pay the school. I would think that would be a uh, school property, ball field school property. Yeah. But I would. Could we approve it based on a contingency that Sarah gets it all set up? Well, we could still do it without Sarah. I mean, because as long as I have the <coughs> roster and if the group was willing to say, we're going to update your roster, we're not going to let anybody play unless they, you know, we have a signed waiver on file, I think, you know, that would work until Sarah could research it a little bit more, make sure she has time to get it entered and, you know. Um, That's just my big fear, too. Like, if I decide that rec committee is too much and I'm not on it anymore, who's it going to, I mean, it just works because I work here and I'm on it, but we don't have a paid parks and rec right. person. It's not really town clerk realm. I do the my rec because of the treasurer piece, and it actually is easier as treasurer to run it all through that for the summer camp. But there's no money going through this, so it's not really a treasurer Roll. But once you played with pickleball, you. I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sarah, once you get on the board, you take it off. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? I'd like to wait uh, just to make sure it's all going to work. But now, this, what you're talking about doing, is not going to set us up to the next person come in. I, I won't say that. I think, you know, lots of towns have sports leagues. I think this is a thing that's growing, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a little bit of a growing pain for the town, so I'm not going to say that. Um, but I think it's, it's one of those things that's a good growing pain because, you know, um, people are getting more involved, and I think it's an opportunity maybe for us to learn how to work through it, too. Right. Well, I thought, if these guys are in front of us right now, we don't know when the next group is going to come in front of us. It could be a year from now. I mean, there, there's, you know, there's lots of towns with sports, recreations, and programs. Um, and once again, it's it's a growing pain. So maybe they're a little bit of an experiment for six months. I don't. Mm. That that's my thought. Is uh, I think we need to try to figure this out. Uh, I think just because if we do approve this, I don't think it means that if someone comes next week, we have to approve it um, because we have the ability to control the gas and how we grow a program or not. Because we're in a we could be in a trial phase. Right. Um, and decide it doesn't work. Hmm. Right. What happens when the skating rink's set up? Is that covered under something in town? Or? The skating rink? Yeah. Yes. You know, that's under our, you know, it's, it's run by the town, managed by the town. Um, you know, we own it, we set it up. And there is some liability that comes with that for us. But just like with any town-owned facility, you know, there's oh, yeah. some liability. Yeah. 
a little bit different because in your particular case, right. I'm just going to say we don't have any control over what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, for our town facilities, you know, we have control over that. You know, we don't necessarily know what you're doing. Got it. You know, right. you know. Is there plans for a rec center in Morrisville? I'd love one if you want to start fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so nothing anytime soon. Maybe you so. could charge for pick a bomb just to come right. right. So what are we going to do? I make a motion to uh, establish the Morristown Pickleball League as an official town league, I guess, group. Under Park Under a, sorry, with a seven month. I'm going to say seven month. That gets us through Winter. the school year. And, yeah, uh, on a seven month trial basis. Second. Any further discussion? So the motion is simply to recognize them as a group with the second motion needed for the waiver of the, uh, the uh, insurance piece. Yeah, if they're an official town group, the insurance piece is, is covered. That's the way I understand yeah. it. Oh, they say hi. And the insurance comes with the waiver. Right. Well, they'll have to sign the waiver. The individual will have to sign the waiver to be a member of that league. Okay. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Dan will be there on the mornings they play pickleball to make sure compliance. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Is there eyes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Thank you. And we welcome you to play. I'd love yeah, to like to play. You. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Number two, approve Stagecoach Road repairs from the storm damage. This is actually the, the paving of Stagecoach Road. That there was, uh, was washed out. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie to you know, with the temperatures the, the way they are right now, I think Kevin will probably agree with me. This is really a temporary <laughs> paving till spring. We're probably going to have to repave this um, next spring when the temperatures come up. But it, hopefully, this will get us through the water. Will you be able to do this with, in the winter, like now? I wouldn't recommend it for anything else, but um, they'll, they'll be able to pave. I'm just not saying that it's going to last okay. very long. All right. Um, you know, we'd have to do something out there just because of the condition that the road is now. Um, it needs, you know, it's it needs to be paved to get us through the winter, and then we'll have to repave it again in the spring. And this was reviewed with FEMA. Well, this will be part of the, the storm recovery, so yeah. they, they, they will fund some of it, the repairs. Do we ever get, do you know if we got approval for FEMA funds? We won't know that for a long time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it, you know, the, the governor's, I don't think the governor's officially requested a declaration yet. Oh, okay. So I haven't heard it anyway that he has. Still assessing damage, I think. Yeah, I don't know where that's at. It takes a couple months to even, I think, to get to the, that declaration stage. Prices that we see here from uh, Jay Hudson, yeah. is that the only cost? This is, or are we yes. There's extension approvals from ECI. Yeah. So what, are, we, are we looking at two different bids here? Or? No, they're not two different bids. They're for the same exact project, except one is just the total lump sum for everything from ECI. Yeah. And that includes the scope. That's the scope of work that Kevin built for them to do. It just it, Hutchins broke it out a little bit cleaner, I suppose, is the best way to put it. So but it's two it? different bids. Okay, that's not my question. Where is the total yeah. cost on the ECI? ACI didn't give us a total cost. They gave us a price per ton. Right. And there's 34 tons. Anybody got a calculator handy? I did that once and I forgot to write it down. Yeah. So what's the paving on the Hutchins piece? So that's I guess my confusion. They're, they're, so their excavation is 15 cubic yards for Hutchins. Their paving piece, and this is all, in, both of these bids include everything. If you read scope, you know, on the ECI scope work, mobilization, gravel material, grade, prep, trim the edges, then for paving and uh, pay four inches, two two inch lifts. In, in Hutchins is the same thing. They're, they're doing the excavation. So I'm sorry, these are two separate. Two separate bids. Two separate bids. Yes. Same one from project. Hutchins, one here. One's like 20 okay. grand. And one's sorry, it was a little, yeah. just a little confusing. Yeah. No, two different companies bidding on the same project. Okay. So if I'm doing my math, this 
8330. 8330, 3CI, yeah. 17,000 for Jay Hutchins. Yeah. That's a huge difference for a, a small job. I'm not quite comfortable that, that one has an underbid and one has a way overbid, and I'm not sure we're getting an accurate. One shows much more tonnage, too. You see how cheap Well, it's not all in there because, um, well, maybe it is. It does. It's excavation work. Mo yeah. It shows mobilization, removal, grade prep, trim edges. It's all in there. It's yeah, just, it is all in there. So he's just actually just charging 245 a ton. Right. For, for every ton. Excavation, covered, mobilization. Yeah. And if you look at just pavement. Jay Hutchins, you know, their price per ton for their asphalt line. It's 30. You know, it's $400. $400 per ton. Versus oh, and this, the paving, it's wow. three thirty a ton. Oh, yeah, four, 400 I get it. Kevin and Dan, are we positive that the, the the total here is just the 245 times 34 they're on the CI? Um, from, from what they've put in their thing, it's, you know, it's including the mobilization, which you'll see that Jay Hutchins has in their bid for $1,500, okay. one lump sum. They've got removing gravel material and the grade and the prep and the trim edges. and. Jay Hutchins has that in there at 15 cubic yards at $250 per per prep. So and what's the fine print? I was just seeing that too. So 521 a ton. We, we're still responsible for the traffic control. Yes, as we always are for any, anything okay. like that. The, that the, the 521 is for the asphalt cement price, which is any, you know, that's what it's going to cost for the asphalt cement, the actual cement that goes into the mix. All right. What do you think, Kevin? At this point, I've only seen the one bid from the Hutchins. I haven't seen the other. The ECI. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like half. Five twenty-one. Yeah. If you do the math, it's like one's eight thousand, eighty-three hundred, and the other one's seventeen two. Yeah. Well, if you do five twenty-one a ton times thirty-four tons, you're seventeen seven, which is a medium. I mean, a couple hundred dollar ballpark of what Hutchins. Right. So why are we seeing two different figures on the ECI? I don't understand that. Because the, the November tonnage cost is double, more than double, what they That's just the asphalt cement that goes into the mix area. But how can they have it $500 a ton and only charge it's, 240 It's not, it's not, it's, it's part of every mix. Component. It's a component of the mix. Right. So if you're putting together asphalt, asphalt cement prices change all the time. Well, yeah, what they're saying is, is that's just happenstance. So it's like so, going for an oil change. It costs ninety bucks based on the cost of oil today. Is yes, that's a, whatever. I think what that is is it's just stating the benchmark. Exactly. Yeah, right. So that that's what that, that costs. Right. If two weeks from now when you tell them they want to do it, it costs seven hundred or yeah, costs up to seven hundred dollars. Their cost is going to reflect that change. A few years ago, we had that change. It is worded really weird. Yeah. yeah but, you know, that's what it is. That's it's, the liquid. It's, it's, that's what they're bidding on this it, based on that I price think of the asphalt. The liquid going the yeah, price of asphalt goes up yeah. before they did the job. Yeah. That's why they put that in there. The price for the mix delivered to the site is built into the thing. It's based on the asphalt cement cost. Well, I can I fix what I'm worried about. I can make a motion yeah. to approve ECI at 83. 30. You're saying that's the total cost, right? Yes, that's what they have in there for a total cost. And that's what, because it's not written here any place that, so it's just saying 34 tons. Oh, it does say plus or minus through there. Yeah, I don't, I'd be, careful, I'd be careful to approve the. <laughs> well, any asphalt that. will have a, you know, when you're putting it down, you're going to have a plus or minus, just like any gravel that you put down. It's, it's, you know, there's not an exact. Yeah. Right. I'll just do that. Huh? I'll make a motion that we approve the ECI to repair the stagecoach road to not exceed nine thousand dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I would just um, ask Dan that you just clarify that it includes the full scope of work. It yes. Does the full okay. Scope of work. Yeah. Yeah. Everything there that you want. yeah, everything's there as far as the full scope of work. Yeah. I'm not sure all yeah. yeah. of that. Okay. Cement pricing, uh, why they listed it like that below. No, we've dealt with it before in the town. We, yeah. All that, in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, discuss Gallery Lane as a town road. Is that you, Gary? 
I suppose. What would you like to tell us? Well, just that uh, we would like to have or at last properties slash Monash properties would like to request the town to take over Gallery Lane from bypass to uh, the beginning of where the buildings start. It's all paved. It's right. basically you know basically a town road as it is, and we're just requesting it be taken over. And the reason is is um, Butternut Mountain Farms is purchasing one of the warehouses, and they're also going to expand that. It, it's all permitted, um, and then there's. Uh, I mean, MSI accesses their business off on that road. We have a storage building off that road. Uh, Mattress Sofa Warehouse is serviced off that road. Vermont Precision serviced off from there. Um, and several different, and uh, Bourne's. Right. There's a big gas tank over there that's serviced off on that street. And just requesting that the town take it over. requirements for us taking it over also has a length requirement. It may it may fit. I just don't know. I don't right. know length of how long I think it's five hundred did we put five hundred feet in the uh, policy I remember. We want it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I don't I don't have the plans on me, I forgot the brand, so I don't I can't tell you what it is. But it's well over five hundred feet. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> well we'd have to do a site visit anyway. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah you'd have to But we have those those lengths ahead of time. There's plenty of room to put the snow back there. Absolutely. There's a lot of room on that. Both sides yeah. the and the also. drainage is all there, catch basin. Drainage all and just. Uh, storm drains are all in. Uh, permit, you know, it's all permitted. Denny. Does that include the parking lot or just the road? No, the just the road. Warehouse. Just the road. Just the road with the... That straight shot. Just the right. road with the turnaround at the end. Yeah. Straight yeah. shot right to the warehouse. We have, we have to identify the actual end of the road, the, uh, whether it's a turnaround. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Talking sure to where the hydrant is? Um, yeah, the hydrant, and there's um, uh, transclosures for power and telephone and stuff there. And there's, there's a dedicated 50 foot uh, right away around, all the way around the building. And uh, yeah, it's all. Matter of fact, we just recorded the mylar for the takeover. We we got all the dimensions on it. And I'm well, Kevin can take a look at it. Yeah, we've been, we've been, been out there. All right. What do you guys think? We get a site visit. We'll do a site visit. Okay. And then we'll do that. Take the cold stand here if you can. So we'll get them straight. Cold rain, rain, yeah. And then come to the next Ice. Yeah. Tomorrow morning. Now are we going to yeah. be able to get <laughs> time for the plow this winter? I'm sorry? Will this make it so we can get this done so we can plow it this winter? Well, I mean, you know, you got to, to it's probably going to take us a good 45 days yeah. to get the meeting warned. Mm -hmm. So you're looking really after the first of the year before we can have the on-site hearing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's realistic. And then after that, we can't take it over on site. So you're really into February, most likely by the time you can actually put a stamp on it and take it over. So. How would it keep plowing it till then anyway? I think um, basically I'm fine with that. It's just we wanted to have it in place when Butternut takes over. They're not going to do any construction until spring anyway, as far as I know. So just wanted to be able to have that. In place for that. So, Denny. Whoever does it now does a real good job for us as fire, as far as fire coverage. There isn't too many places we can't drive a truck around that building, so. That's good. Just keep that in mind when you're looking. Yeah, it's going to be, Denny, there's a dedicated <laughs> 50 foot right away. Matter of fact, uh, there's a uh, 
fire break between two buildings there. That's coming out, and there'll be a road right through there, going all the way around. Perfect. Um, so you'll be able to drive around around circles if you want, but <laughs> bring your hose out and do whatever. And it'll give you better access to propane tank and actually better access to. And yeah, the, the left side of that whole structure that. The left side there's this, yeah. The old and park. Understandably so. Yeah. But that will all be maintained as it is now. Good. All right, we can schedule a safe. Tip and then we'll get that scheduled. Sounds good. Thank you. Next, approve the change to the personnel policy, section 20 of educational travel and lodging. Don't know that this will be approved tonight um, in the past, or I think you know, we don't have anything in our personnel policy about travel, um, reimbursing for travel, length of stays, distance away. I thought we did. Um, there's nothing in there. Huh. There is in the PD. Police Because, oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, so there is for the PD contract, but yeah. not overall. And it, it, quite frankly, it's, you know, it's a little confusing sometimes on what we are going to pay for. Now we're going to pay for it. You know, we do have you know, people that will request, even though they live someplace, and, you know, I'll, I'll use Burlington, for example. Should we be paying for somebody to stay overnight in Burlington? So I, I think it would be helpful for everybody on the staff, and including myself, and for budget purposes, you know, to understand what the town's going to reimburse for travel and, and or not. Um, so it's, this is a kind of a starting point. Uh, Tina threw this together just based on some questions to some of the staff, so that we have a place to go and look at that. So I, you know, I'm not necessarily asking you to approve it tonight, but I think it's important that we come up with a policy. Um, so that we're uniform on how we approve travel and reimbursement rates and overnight stays, that kind of thing. So can you put something together put in front of us and take a look at it? Right here. It's all. It's in here. Yeah, but that's, does that cover everything? I was wondering about alcohol. I saw that. We have an alcohol policy during the time. No, I mean, we wouldn't be reimbursing alcohol. But I mean, maybe it should be stated that would be, because it, you know, dinner, you know, my box, you could put a glass of wine in there. Yeah. Well, you have to, you, you have have to, to turn, turn in your receipt. You have to turn in an itemized receipt. Right. So should it be stated in here, no alcohol, or is that just going to be understood? I think we already have now no alcohol policy. Well, this one you wouldn't be that. necessarily at working hours. It was the evening. So, yeah, we could put that in there. Yeah, typically gratuities are not covered on a, uh, a reimbursement typically. This is strictly for the food itself. Is 80 miles too much? It depends on how you plot it on the map. Do you have the same thought? Are we doing a pinpoint with the center more so with an 80 mile diameter and drawing a big circle, or how are we doing this? Is it road mileage? I would consider it to be road mileage. Like they say, 80 miles is not not even to Burlington in the back. Right. right. Yeah. It's 90. So is it one way or around? It's distance to travel in your car. Oh, I was thinking Tina and I did it one way. One I way. way. I we were it looking one way, one way and like most of, I go to Killington and like Maury a lot. I think Killington 81 miles. It was 81. Yeah, it was. And Lake Maury is like 76. I mean, Lake Maury, oh, really? I went to Lake Maury. You don't want to get up and have to leave here at 6.30 in the morning. Or even, no, you have to leave really early to get there at 4.30 um, conference. Now, yeah, yeah usually if it's a day, day conference, conference, I get up early and go. Even Killington. I've gone to Rutland for a day. If it's a day conference, I get up really early. Yeah. Uh, if it's two day, or if it's two day, then stay over. I, stay I, over. I, I guess probably yeah. some of the impetus here was uh, we recently had the state EMS conference, which was at the Hilton in Burlington. Um, Corey and I both attended that. Uh, we attended a leadership meeting earlier in the week, and then we were both there at the conference. Uh, my conference tab was actually picked up by the state of Vermont because I was a speaker at the conference, uh, so that that didn't come back. Uh, but Corey, on her days off, came from her home in North Troy to Burlington. 
uh, and then stayed overnight because there was like a six o'clock meeting and then an eight o'clock meeting the next morning. So that, that her, um, I believe it was like 76 miles from her house to the And that would be from point, this is written point of employment, not point of where you live. So it wouldn't necessarily come under that, it wouldn't fit that. Burlington's only 45 miles away from Morrisville. Um, so I, 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 under, I, understand, and, I understand what you're saying, but this was on her schedule off time. And then... Did she not... So it, we're, we're jumping into... I, I, no, I, I, I'm just this. saying, I'm using it as an example. If, if she's going to a conference on a day off, she wasn't being paid by the town for that? I, I, I don't. See, that's, that's was some of the question yeah. that we had. And that's, you know, to me, if somebody's at a conference, it's a working day. I agree. Yeah, better. Right. Yeah. I agree. And, but I would say that <laughs> yeah, she should have been paid for a working day. But as far as the other time, I, I can tell you that our police department travels two hours one way to the police academy for training. We don't pay for the night before. They go down early that morning. They go down there for an 8 o'clock class. They attend a class if it's a week long. There's costs that are, that are covered. Richard can speak to that one bit better than I can, but um, they have housing there. I, I want to be, be careful that we are not going to open something up worded incorrectly that the police department says, hey, I'm going to go out to the Holiday Inn and Rutland versus staying in the academy. Not that they would, just <laughs> saying that it opens the door. We want to make sure this is written appropriately and, and you know, we don't. Well, actually, I didn't I mean, know that's I mean, the point. Because covered for a two-day conference, we've got to know where I stand in between that's that, you know, a, a distance away from the town of Morristown. Yeah, but yeah. we should be putting them up overnight. We, they're going to bring that back to us. It's our benefit. But. Denny, you first, then Richard. Does this, for, like, you full-time employees, does this include us volunteers? I would think if we're sending somebody to some place, you know, that, that's traveling, yeah, I think it's Well, I'm just yeah. saying, because I just submitted quite a bill. And I didn't know if this had something to do with it. No, no, no. 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 It didn't. I went over a thousand miles round trip from Marshall Fire Station to Marshall Fire Station. Actually, we, we made sure that you got reimbursed, right? Because right. you only put gas, we put your Right. Miles. I was only, I kept my gas slips, but I just happened to know the mileage because kept track of it, but it's, you know, I guess I'm not really picking up what you're putting down on this whole, what you're trying to accomplish. I so want to, if you somebody know, puts like, in for training, let's say Sarah, Sarah wants to go to a conference, she, she's been to several, where she's learning more and more about the legal aspects of the town clerk's office. That is a benefit to us, it's a training that's going to make her better at the job that we ask her to do. So if it's a two-day conference, there's an overnight stay, and it's in Bennington, that's a three-hour one-way drive. It's, it's too much, to, in my mind, it's too much for us to ask her to drive all the way down there, mm -hmm. attend an all-day conference, drive back, and then drive back down the next day. Mm -hmm. The mileage we would put in, would, to me, would be a circumference around the center of Morrisville uh, as the crow flies and type of thing. If it's outside that parameter, then we cover it. And in case-by-case -case basis, if something else you know, somebody could come to us and say, well, it's inside that, but this is a circumstance. But I'm just saying, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're looking to take care of our employees so they're putting out, have them drive when they're exhausted. Uh, but that's that's where this is coming from, Benny. If it's a requirement of training uh, for any of our staff no, full-time, if it's more a state full-time, then part -time. No, I would disagree then with that. We, we sent a couple of firefighters to the... Uh, yeah, it's in our budget. Yeah, but I want to make sure that we budget for that trip. That's what yeah, I was saying. It's, it's in everybody's budget. It's in everybody's yeah. budget. Yeah, so everybody's got that kind of yeah. budget. I want to make sure that we're consistent across the board. <laughs> yeah. Richard, what are you? What are you good saying? Well, we've obviously we've been doing this for many, many, many years. So we use a standard. We don't have this. Not a hard and fast. But generally, if it's two hours or more, you spend the night. So if you drive down, and then again, we use the police academy, but I'll also add two hours from the police station, you know, wherever they live, and back, back there into it. Right. If it's way more than two hours, like three or four hours, like, you know, we got our supervisor training in Massachusetts, yeah. you know, we send them down the day before, you 
Christmas and <coughs> spend the night before. Generally, the two hour, we use a two hour rule and we reimburse them for whatever their food expenses are, minus alcohol. Again, it's a reimbursement off their, their receipts. And I think we generally go up to $25 a day. So, and we've done that for over 20 years. So. I don't even know if we get it. It's, it's not even printed in our contract right now. So, but that's our standard that we've used right long. So, we haven't run into any issues with them. So. What do you guys think? I think it needs a little more work. But I do. The, the, need more work. Uh, the, the, base, the basics are there. I just think outlining in more detail. Um, I, I do think, like, because this says uh, two, day, two day or more, but I do think there might be instances where a one day conference would absolutely merit an overnight stay. If I'm reading this right. <laughs> Well, who would the approval come from? Should it come, come, from, come from it. Oh, okay. So other than and, and that's the bottom line. The yeah, I know. Right. The rest kind of goes to the last one. Just kind of right. Goes. We have department heads. I mean, I'm, Correct. We're on like a highway. The police department, the department head decides that yes, I've approved this train. They're going. And this is what the reimbursement is, as he's described. So are we letting department heads make the approval only in training, or is it all going to run through you? And on, on I the actually I think event, yeah. I don't want an answer. Just want to clear. I think it. you know realistically, it's the department heads that should make it, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a consistent policy for them to be able to follow. And then if, if there's something, and, and just like with any other thing that we run into, sometimes the, the, where the policy doesn't work, and somebody can come to me and make a great case for the policy doesn't work in this particular case, I've got to be there at five o'clock in the morning, you know, to, to or six o'clock when this training starts. Hey, yeah, nobody wants to get up and, and start driving, you know, at three or two o'clock in the morning. It's, it's kind of a common sense rule at that point in time. If that makes sense. Or maybe it doesn't get done until nine o'clock at night. You know, there, there's those kinds of things that I think the, the common sense rule applies to that, that I'm able to make those exceptions for those things. But I would love to see the department heads have a consistent policy where they can go to and go, well, you're going to this, you know, Sarah's taking her staff and going to this training. Um, and it's no questions, it's not about sharing a room or anything like that. It's all consistent, you know. From that point, this is the town's policy. It also helps them budget and their budgets when they're putting together for those things that they want their staff to be trained on. And that way it's consistent across the board and everybody understands what the policy is. So um, that's my hope, and I think that's the reason why we, we started this discussion, because you know, I think sometimes we're kind of all over the place on you know, what's the town going to reimburse or not pay for, how our meals work, um, and I just want to make sure we're consistent with all of our employees, including volunteer employees, because they go to trainings too. I think we had some EMS that went to some trainings, and we want to make sure that if they're out there and they're getting trained and they're bringing that back to us, that we're treating everybody consistently. Well, it could be somebody from the select board, you know, sure. do a select board institute sure. training. Absolutely. Sure. And Same thing. Maybe something reflected in maybe it's discretion, but thinking about the weather. So even though it may be um, a little less than 80 miles, and, and weather's a factor in getting there at a good time or coming yeah. to yeah. consider that. Denny. I know we've done it in the past. We have gone with Dan, even though we have money. We still took it with Dan anyway, just to make sure, yeah, this is what we're doing. Is this good? You know, because he's ultimately the one. And with us, the good thing is we don't get paid or pay our people to go. What they get is their hotel room or their meal. So yes, when we go somewhere, it's usually one person for a hotel room. We have to keep track of their meals because we do not put them on payroll unless there is a fire call, just like everybody else. So that works for us. Yeah. Well, once again, you know, the fire department's a great example because last year we sent a couple people to Indianapolis for Second some training. Year. Um, they worked with Erica. They, I think it was an Airbnb they found for rent, you know, with two bedrooms. You know, it was close within walking distance. So they, you know, we, we were able to work all that out with the department head to say, 
yeah, we've got them set up for the training, and this is what the expectation is for that training and the travel. Um, but once again, I, you know, every time it comes up, Burlington is a good example. You know, um, where's the point of base at? Are we going to call it from the workplace or from the, the employee's home? You know, those are questions that come to me that I don't have a clear policy on. Um, and I want it to be a consistent policy for everybody. Well, that's why it should be mileage, not from here, because mm -hmm. you might be on your day off, it might be on a Saturday or whatever. You know, just like I do at work when I do it. It's like it's from home. That's, mileage on the car. That's the reason why we're, we're here discussing it, so that yeah. I understand what the board's desires are. Kevin. So the 80 miles would be if for when I stay. So mileage would be if I leave from here, what's you reverse complete any mileage. So if it's 45 miles to Burlington, and I drive 45 miles there and 45 miles back, it's the 90 miles in mileage reimbursement. Yes. The 80 miles is only for overnight, for overnight stay purposes. purposes. The mileage is That's the actual the mileage that you will be reimbursed right. for. If you're driving your own POV, yes. Your own right. work vehicle? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like we got to polish it some more. <laughs> there was one other just comment in here. It said overnight lodging will be coordinated with the town administrator's administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Great. Is that always going to be the case? What we've consistently tried to do for the motel rooms. Okay. If you can keep it. No. It has worked just, so far. I there's think. a couple of reasons for that, Chris. Sometimes I, it I, I'm not arguing the merits no, of it. Sometimes it I, won't work out that way, but for the most part, I'd like people to try to go to one central point to, to do this. My exact reason for bringing it up. I will out. say that I usually put my own. My reason for bringing it up is if it's in the policy, it's something that we should stick to. If we're not going to do it, why put it in the policy? That was my reason for bringing it up. Well, usually that's also where the two credit cards exist to charge the rooms to. That book. I'm not, a, I'm not as opposed as the town treasurer at all running through one person. I'm just saying past practice, I have not run through Erica. Okay. So do you think maybe that it should be... Um, Overnight lodging may be coordinated with the town that there's a wiggle room there. It's up to you. It's your policy. That's double edged. Yeah, I mm. I think pick away and either you have a policy that does it or uh, Yeah, I don't have a don't. preference one way or the other. I'm just saying if we put it in we should probably stick to it. That's my like point. if we're, we were working for Maryland, we knew where we had to go. Mm -hmm. So do we put that up to somebody in the town and say, this is the area, this is within the miles we want to be? You know, it's easier for us knowing where we're going, what we need to do, where we can look for a place to stay. Right. I think Just all like going over to an, uh, the regional one. All these policies are good to have in writing, but like all it takes is communication with with Dan on all this. That's why, you know, we weren't following this other policy, mm -hmm. but everything went through Dan and it was looked at and talked about and you do the right thing. But, you know, it's it's hard to pin down a policy. It's gonna cover every scenario. Well, the main you, thing is communication. Well Danny, what you're saying though is you you kind of scouted it out and then you shared that with Tina. Erica. All right, Erica. That's what I did too. I went to a conference in Maine and I looked for the hotels and said, Erica, can you book me this hotel? And she did. Yeah. We booked that room. Yeah. Did we pay for yours going down there, your hotels, or did you guys? Okay. I think you guys did. I mean, we, Sean it was running that one. Okay. And all different. I know, I'm pretty sure it went well, did you put it on budget. our, did you put it on, you know, did, did the, the Billy ran through the town? I believe so. Did you see a bill for that, or was it the association that paid? I, I didn't see any kind of bill for that, Danny. No, for hotel rooms? Through the association. That's what I was thinking. I don't think that came through us. I mean, it's just one of them things yeah. where it wasn't a have to, it was a need to. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. I kind of like that first sentence. Period. The town will fund all town related conferences and classes as approved by a supervisor. So, no like, matter what it is. Yes. No matter what it is. No matter who the supervisor is. Right. The thing is, is, let's say the supervisor, you might think you're the supervisor. So you get it done and get all the information. You may go check with Dan to make sure that it's okay and all right and work with Dan. 
but that it says A, so I, I would think that a supervisor approving this happening is, a, I think, a good thing. It's like the chief. I was kind of coming up from the other end. I think we put the policy, whatever we want to have in it, and then have a statement underneath that says, if your plan varies from this policy, you must get approval from Dan, say, or something like that. Yeah, you know? we discussed it with him. Yeah. That's what the like last sentence basically mm -hmm. says. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think it's pretty close to what I, I'm very much in favor of a policy so that we know going ahead of time we don't have to go to Dan every time. We just know right. what the standard is. So do you guys want to approve this one and then make changes that we need to? Well, I think you know, one of the things I just want to make sure, you know, the overnight lodging may rather than will be coordinated with the town's administrative assistant. Um, there's no alcohol, no gratuities, and this is one way. I, I disagree with the gratuities, personally. Me I too. Like I don't really give a shit if you... No, I'm just... Sorry. That's, <laughs> that's the reason why I'm just Chris. within the $25. Put that okay. It's got it on tape. We've overlooked the gratuities since... Yeah. My company owns those. All right. I mean, it's unreasonable to expect... Yeah. It's part of the bill. Go to it's on the dinner, and not yeah. 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 gratuity. All right, about thirty percent, but fifteen or whatever. Well, it's in the twenty-five dollars, right? I mean, common sense needs to prevail at some point, and we can micromanage. I don't think we need to micromanage five bucks. Right. That's what I mean. We can <laughs> so much we could have down in essence. Like, like the, again, uh, fifteen percent, like you said, Bob. Yeah. Well, that would be covered, and if you. Really thought it was better than you put it that. Right. So I'm just trying to, to pick up on everything I've been listening to. I know. To. That's, I mean, it's not ready to approve tonight. Well, I know, but I, you know, if we're going to change it, I want to make sure that when I come back with again, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got the things that you guys have discussed tonight. Yeah. So the alcohol is not part of the bill. Right. Um, weather can be one of the exceptions. Um, Overnight lodging may be coordinated with the, the town's administrative assistant. Um, I think that's confusing. You just want me to take that out? Yeah, I want a firm yes or no from the select board. I. Do the department heads can, can do it or they can? Just a may. It should it's be. Gray. It's too gray. Just strike the whole sentence if you're going to leave something gray. A policy is not helpful if it doesn't have strong wording. I don't think it matters who does it. I think okay. I would agree with striking the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I can just, in practice, I book all my own travel because Potentially, I like the way I do it. You run the risk of somebody <laughs> booking the penthouse suite when yes. you do something like mm -hmm. that. And that's my concern with that. So uh, I haven't thought about right, the There is no rate. Government rate, hotel rooms, but I heard that I heard uh, B and B or, or I don't know if it was used. Air, the time. Air. So, I, I don't know what the standard needs to be, if it's uh, in there or not, but it's a protection of the taxpayers if you don't have somebody going to a place that is above and beyond what you can get for a government rate at a hotel nearby. Right. Well, and one good. thing I'm trying to do too here is, is make sure that, like, if somebody does book something, that they're not, they go by what the prices are in here, they're not getting the uh, highest thing there is out there and expecting Penny. the town to pay it. What now, Denny? I don't like being micromanaged. <laughs> I was waiting that for that. Up front, close, and personal. I was waiting for that. I mean, every one of your department heads has a budget. We're all responsible adults that write this budget. If I can't be trusted to send my people to a day's end instead of a hotel by Hilton or whatever it is, we're going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you can write however you want in there, but we're going to be meeting again because I'm not letting somebody outside my department make my reservations. I agree. I agree with you. I do my own. It drives me nuts. That's, someone else that's why this policy is... <laughs> I, yeah. We're nowhere near ready to approve it, that's in my opinion. I do. Because it's, 
It is helpful, I think, if there's a way to talk about the rate of approval because no, could, sure can... I don't know how, how you could do that, but in, there are places you could go. I mean, even Burlington, you could stay at a hundred dollar room or a four dollar room. Assuming that the supervisor would know the cost of the hotel, I was well, assuming. We will. Well, you may do that, but I was assuming that the supervisor would say, okay, you can go to this two-day conference, the conference costs X amount of dollars, and you can stay overnight, but you wouldn't necessarily know where they were going to book it. That's the intent of this. Oh, okay. But well, that, I, know I wasn't what we trying to offend anyone. Is we make sure we have their hotel arrangements, flight arrangements. All they got to do is get there. And everything else has gone through the three chiefs, the two, two or three people that may be going, so it's not just we don't give them a, a credit card and say here go have a good well time. i know but you may be different than somebody else and that's why i worded it like that you, that's why it's a problem you know so i i don't care what you want it to say you can say whatever you want i wasn't trying to be offensive by that well i don't know who wrote it i did oh, and i wasn't yeah. trying to be offensive and that's why I said we got to get something put well, together fire, better so we can. Right. Deal with that's it. the whole point of starting. Because we'll be here till 10 o'clock talking about this. Yes. Right. All right. I think we've got something that we can. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I make a motion to table? Yes. We don't, need, we don't need a motion for that. Okay. No, it's I did put it out to the clerk's listserv to see if anybody else had policies. I got one response back that said, oh, that's great. When you get one, will you let me know? <laughs> I was going to say, we, we haven't had one for how many years? So waiting a little longer is not going to be So I'm guessing there's not a lot out there. State guys on our Everyone's got these. <laughs> OK, next <Yeah. laughs> is budget conversation, public safety, EMS, fire, and PD. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. No, that was struck. <laughs> Yeah. Who we started with? Uh, EMS. You guys want to? Well, in the past, you know, we've kind of gone through page by page. Page by page, and okay. it's just like board. We want to look Bill, at. you can join us up here. Yeah. Okay. Come right up here, Bill. We'll just go through and you can tell us about anything that's different. Um, so I think we've we essentially level funded the vast majority of the line items consistent with what we've done uh, last year in this budget year, our current budget year. Um, uh, on uh, page one there at the bottom under administration new equipment purchase, we've requested um, uh, a, a, a Physio Control Lucas Cardiac Compression System. Uh, we've been training uh, diligently over uh, over the last seven months to get our people up to the standards of the Vermont Resuscitation Academy. Uh, and our current mechanical device uh, for delivering chest compressions uh, does not meet the standard of the Resuscitation Academy. It does 80 compressions a minute, which is not state of the science anywhere in the world, actually. Um, the, uh, the Lucas system is adjustable anywhere from 100 to 120 compressions a minute. Um, the science, uh, the, uh, the science uh, between medical and mechanical uh, chest compressions and cardiac arrest uh, is that they're equivalent. Uh, then the question becomes uh, as a crew resource and a crew safety tool. And we're often responding with a two-person two crew to a cardiac arrest. Uh, this compression device essentially becomes the third crew member. Uh, so uh, that uh, that item is uh, uh, is I believe the budget uh, the actual budgetary price from physio uh, from Stryker on that was fourteen two. Uh, so that's the request under that line item. Uh, is it a provide compression? Yeah, it's actually yeah it's a com it's it's a piston style compression device compared to the our, our current machine, which is a load banding device. Um, the uh, Lucas device sets up in uh, anywhere between 15 and 20 seconds without an interruption in manual compressions. Um, uh, my previous experience with that particular device is that we actually have a good problem, which is a wakefulness during CPR. The device does a good enough compression that people have actually been awake while we're trying to resuscitate them. 
uh, it's a good problem to have. It's a freaky problem to have. But uh, so that's uh, that's the increase in that uh, under new equipment. Um, salaries uh, was uh, put together by Tina. Uh, that includes the um, the fifth person, the fifth part time position, which was approved at the last select board meeting. Uh, Tina, did you have anything you wanted to add under? What's the PT shift coverage there? Part time shift coverage. That's a quick. That's that's part time. The if one of our full time people takes time off of their ETL, yeah. then you have to have somebody come in and cover their time. Right, but I thought that adding a person is going to keep that from being as high. <coughs> I think adding the fifth person was a way of, of minimizing the overtime, overtime that's already being right. spent. But it doesn't help with the part-time shift coverage, right? Well, no, it does because they're going to be covering the shifts that Bill and Corey and Diana are covering now and we're paying them overtime to do it. Right. Page two. Um, the benefits are as outlined. Uh, Tina put that package together for us. It's all in the back in the salmon in orange the color, if you want. Yeah, the, the actual breakdown is right there. Right, it's pretty flat. Uh, under operating supplies, uh, specifically the, uh, the oxygen and nitrous, we currently have one nitrous oxide system, which is a non opiate pain reliever uh, that can be used not only by the paramedics but by our advanced level people. We currently only have one of those systems. Uh, we're looking to uh, not really increase that line item, but there's a new system that will be coming out after January 1, pending FDA approval, and that system is actually less than the system that we currently have in place. So it's not going to uh, go out. So, yeah, so we're looking to add that that new, <coughs> that new system from air gas. Uh, but uh, that should not increase the line out of it uh, because that, that new device is actually less than the current one we have. Mm -hmm. uh, no big changes under, uh, uh, under uh, meetings and trainings. Yes, uh, sure. Tina, Bill, the actual is is that actual projected or actual year to date? That's actual for the fiscal year of 1819. That's actually oh, sorry. what okay. was. So we don't have a projected. We only have the budgeted of the year we're in right now. And that's and no, it. So no projected for the year. Well, only on your financial statements can you see yeah. that. But. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to do because sometimes it depends on when the spending. Oh, I get this. Yeah. Cycle, I get this. Yeah. Cycle, yeah. Uh, it's just. <coughs> Yeah, it's just it's, hard to tell. It's, yeah, it is. You know, we're, we're trying to predict a year yep. seven months out or eight months out really right now. Standard in budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any questions so far? Any questions on page three? Page four. Um, the biggest change on, uh, on uh, page four is under capital improvements. Um, we've got 11 windows in the old part of the, the EMS building yep. uh, that are wood frame and uh, in disrepair. Um, and, uh, That's and, a change them all? Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the budget of the mount here is a, uh, uh, is a quote for, uh, for vinyl, vinyl frame windows to go in. Um, and just button up that other end of the building as good as the, uh, the, the office and bay end is. Is it vinyl outside, good inside, or vinyl outside? Uh, what we currently have? Or what would be replacing I believe it was vinyl all the way through. Yeah, there. Uh, you know, the, um, the current classroom still has the original bay windows from when it was named in this bay. Um, and those are, uh, those are exceedingly drafty in that room. Uh, window window. Toward the uh, toward the bottom of page four, capital page building. Four, capital building. What did you spend the five thousand two hundred on? Do you know? Uh, which which item is that? Okay, it's, it's the year we're in, right? The 
five thousand two dollars that we spent last year. Yeah. That was for carpeting in the training room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, we yeah yeah we we redid the uh, and you had nothing for for one year. Now you went up to nine thousand one hundred fares. Yeah, for the for the so windows. But that's eleven windows. Yes, sir. Do you have anything else on the horizon, or as far as um, on, on the what on the horizon? No. For no, getting that uh, getting that classroom buttoned up uh, with new carpeting, uh, we uh, painted we uh, repainted it. Uh, yeah, the classroom is, is should be good. Yeah, the classroom is good for foreseeable future. Just for clarification purposes, our, our capital threshold is five thousand. Uh, well, it depends on what it is. It's for infrastructure. It's ten, and for uh, improvements. Um, I'm not sure. I would have to double check to see if this would qualify for a capital improvement. It might be 10. But I put it there just simply because I wanted to make sure we took a look at it because our auditor makes us put it in a separate category. She won't let us run it in with anything else. So I wanted to review it a little bit. Okay. Anything else? No, no, uh, really big changes in that. No, it's pretty flat overall, isn't it? We tried. Um, the uh, the one item under uh, the one item under uniforms uh, was uh, the increase from six thousand to eight thousand. Uh, that uh, that extra uh, that extra just under two thousand is uh, body armor. Uh, we've been training our people to the uh, EMS in the warm zone standard uh, for uh, uh, essentially active shooter incidents. But we also know that uh, uh, the rise in assault on EMS personnel, uh, these would, instead of having, uh, we would have three sets, uh, three, three vests that would move from the primary truck, whichever truck is on would be the truck that has the vests. Um, uh, the preferred the preferred vendor we wanted to go with on this actually makes an EMS specific vest uh, that has tourniquet holders. Um, it's a uh, straight plate in the back because uh, research shows the most EMS assaults are from the rear. Um, it's uh, just another an, uh, an additional layer of protection for our people. Scary but good. Yeah, it's uh, it's the reality of uh, it's the reality of what we're dealing with now. So, what's not in this budget that you need? Uh, well, the original request on the Lucas was for two of them, so we'd have one on each ambulance. Uh, but uh, we can actually, uh, I'm actually okay splitting that up over over this year, mm -hmm. one this year and one next year, uh, to spread that out. Um, other than that, I think. Uh, um, I think we're okay. Uh, uh, we're seeing what this. Um, we're closing the window at the end of this week for applications for that new part-time position, and hopefully have that filled within a couple of weeks. And then uh, I'm hoping that'll address the uh, the uh, the ongoing overtime issues that we're having. Just like us, you know, like we said, talked at the last meeting, we're consistently having 20 to 36 hours, 24 to 36 hours a week open. That are generally being filled at overtime by uh, either me or court. Do you have enough candidates for the job? Uh, I've got one application so far in house. I haven't put it out of house yet. I wanted to give our staff a, a look at it first because we have a quicker learning curve to onboard them. Sure. Obviously. Um, and uh, my my hope is that uh, that fifth position uh, addresses that issue uh, without having to look at adding a full time position. We do do. I'm sorry. We do too. Yes, sir. I agree. I mean, it's growing. I mean, the town's growing, and the, certainly the calls are growing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we used to operate on such a shoestring budget, and now we're mm -hmm. kind of getting up with times, which is good. Mm -hmm. I think Nathan had a lot to do with that. You know, his his uh, joining the the squad helped us, but it made us realize what we weren't doing. Hmm. And we appreciate what you do. You know, you and Corey do a lot for us, and you know, I know we wouldn't have the squad we do without you guys. Um, Thank you. But we want to know if there's yeah. big things coming. We think of long-range capital stuff. You yeah. know, um, I think uh, uh, adding adding that that 
second truck, yeah. getting rid of the the truck that we're having issues with. Um, we've got that uh, we've got that other truck uh, A1, the new the new A1. Uh, we've got that in monthly rotation now. So uh, it was first out all last month. It'll be first out all next month. So we've got a rotation schedule set up, uh, and that truck is serving a swap. Um, so it was I, a good buy and good. I, I think. I think. Spent. Yeah. Um, the, the, I shared with you the feedback from the staff after we put it on the road. Yes. Uh, that uh, we got a lot of good feedback from staff about that being a solid purchase mm -hmm. uh, that addressed uh, not only the short-term issue but also buys us some time uh, looking down the road at uh, getting on a uh, on a more set rotation for for new ambulance. Any questions for Bill? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. We'll do uh, fire department. Denny. Aren't you glad you're back in the chief's job? Huh? Aren't you glad you're back in the chief's job? I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> We're always happy to see you. Yeah, I'm glad they've been long for a minute. I didn't mean to get that, but it happens. We'll start start on page one here. Sure. Kind of hard to find anything wrong with this one. Well, it went down. Yeah. Here we go. No. <laughs> Any questions on page one here? Page two. On page two, the Lamar County, that's not. The more, the, more, uh, the dispatch? Yeah, that's not. I won't know that for a while. Right. That's they I don't. That's, that's, that's just what it was. was. Just a, yeah. They just place a little yeah. right now. Between that, uh, we do that fuel here. prices. That's that all crystal ball. Out of our control. You plug in a figure and hope it's similar. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, prices we usually don't get out in late December. Oh, uh, yeah. That's when we'll get dispatch stuff. Yeah. Any questions on page two? I'll let you know one. Because you're going to see on professional services medical, there's a reason yep. there. Yeah, 3,000, 8,000. Yeah, what we're wanting to start doing is rotating our people at least every other year for physicals as they get when they first come on. Because mm -hmm. once they go to full family, when they first come on, that's it. Unless they have their own personal physicals. We, as a department, have never required anybody to take a second physical. <laughs> so, do you have them? I get one every year from that's the good. VA. That's good. You know, that's why I knew my A1C jumped from one to six. <laughs> you know, um, get blood work every year. It's a good idea. And we just want to have the opportunity for those who may not get one every year that we can start rotating everybody through. That way, it's just kind of like a follow up. Maybe we can catch something. Maybe right. the doctors can catch something. Before they have a heart attack and yeah. job. Are you doing like the rotation be like every other year? Someone would have, someone in the department would be having one. You'd have one one year, then two years later, you'd have another one, right. and so on. I like that. Would you think of a mandatory option for some? I mean, some of your firefighters may already be getting physicals? Or you it would be an option, but mandatory. Because even though I get one through the VA, unless I want to okay a bunch of stuff or the town wants to jump through a bunch of hoops, they're not going to get my physical. Correct. If we go to the town doctor, they know what we're looking for in particular. You know, they will do a physical, but they'll also do more on the physical capability, the heart respiratory stuff like that things that are firefighter related yeah. exactly. so the next question is going to take the whole process through firefighter comes back is physical where does it fall on this 
And I follow up with that with, are we making this a part of, uh, you have to pass. We pay volunteers, but what happens if something shows up? Are we not, are we going to be a determining factor to say, well, you failed your physical, so you no longer be a firefighter? We're already dealing with that. Yeah, we do. Okay. Especially for interior firefighting already. Okay. Say we've already had one example with uh, Zeth. No, I wouldn't remember. I wouldn't mention any names. Uh, <laughs> one of our members got hurt at drill. He came to us with a doctor's note. Doctor said, can't lift this, that, and the other thing. Once he gives us this note, he is on light duty and don't come to the department until this doctor clears. There, there may be, may not limit what they can, that they can't be a firefighter, but they may limit what function they can do within the fire department. Okay. Like he couldn't lift up to 10 pounds. Right. Just, just like any other. Can come. So there we go, I'm gonna ask, go back to my original question, where does HIPAA fall on this? Well, I think in Tina, you're more of HIPAA. In, in, uh, in the case that Denny's talking about, that's a town workers comp claim. And oh, everything okay. is, yeah, everything so. is filed. I don't know anything about any of that. That has mm -hmm. to be communicated from the doctors to workers comp, but only with a release from the, the patient. Yeah, but that yeah, was not through workers comp. Workman's comp. Oh, but oh, 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 but once again, the doctor is going to sign off that he's capable of, right. of either fulfilling the role of a firefighter or not fulfilling the role of a firefighter. Correct. Right. I'm talking about right. the results of the physical. Are those going to come back just in the form of a note from the doctor saying he, can, he or she can be a firefighter? Or are there going to be the test results? Are there going to be HIPAA stuff that's going to be on file somewhere? And protect? I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes along with I'm looking at my HIPAA experts. I, I've never received any of that kind of information. I usually, like any anybody that's out on workers' comp, they just bring a note from the doctor. It's not workers' comp. We'll go out workers' comp. Yeah, this is. We're talking about these folks getting physical. And, and, and maybe jumping way ahead of this thing. Maybe I just you know, Chris, you kick me in the shin. <laughs> I'm going way ahead of you. I'm just concerned that we think through the whole process of this. I'm all about keeping our guy, our, our folks healthy up there and, and and all that stuff. I just don't want to make sure we're not stepping on our toes and we're not uh, protecting the information that's coming out. I don't think that information is going to come back to us. What the information that's going to come back to us is, is that they're qualified or not qualified. Right. What if, what if yeah. we created so a very simple form? So this, there is one all day. So there should be, basically what we're talking about is a fitness for duty Correct. Uh, physical. So we want to think about it in that aspect versus right. your normal physical that you go and have that's kind of separate. It's, it could potentially it's no different what they're gonna do when they first join. So it's when a they first first join, they they go to the physical that what you're so what you're su suggesting, which I think is great, is a more regular check in on fitness right. for you. <coughs> and, and similar to anyone like, who like a DOT holds physical. a DOT, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say the same thing. One, yeah. CDL. I just you took my do DOT. the same thing, but it's a process. I do yeah. think it sounds like there is a process in place already. Just continue that. Right. There, 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 is, there, there is there is something yeah. you know, for a new firefighter that they go and there's a form that the doctor has to follow, and it gives the doctor some clear guidelines on, on what those requirements are. Um, and there also has been a case of somebody with a cardiac event that wants to be an interior firefighter that has to be re-cleared to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and I think the, the, from that perspective, I think we're really going to be required to do this. It's, so it's, it's really not, I think it's a question of we need to be doing this and we need to make sure that our firefighters are cleared physically to be able to meet, because it's a very demanding role to be able to meet that. Um, and I think it's the interior firefighting, I think is, this, is really the standard that we're, we're looking at here so that they can meet the requirements to, to wear the air packs, the respirators, all that, that fun stuff. So they're clearing them. And if they come back and they're not cleared, you know, we're not going to make a judgment on what is. They have to go to their own doctor at that point in time for anything that they need, which, and then they can come back and they can be re-cleared to, to meet that standard. But I'm good. I'm fully supportive. I just want to make sure we're not paying them the road to hell with good intentions. Correct. Right. Well, there's a reason we're doing this. And I have a firefighter that passed away, didn't take his doctor's advice and get followed up for high blood pressure. 
the doctor that we deal with installed, we have already gotten things back telling us that this person needs this followed up before they can do anything. Well, guess what? That person, until they come back with that follow-up and cleared by another doctor, like I said, the last one we just did, they had to go down there four times because the doctor couldn't write it right. No restrictions, no nothing, cleared to go back to full duty, can't lift over 50 pounds. That puts a restriction on him. He's done until he gets that cleared. We went two weeks with this. So, Good to have it. Yep. What, when you, when someone is, you're fighting a fire and uh, you get the uh, carbon monoxide, do you test for that when you come back to the uh, station? EMS can test for that on yeah. site. Do they do that? We have a two bottle rule. Once somebody's gone through two bottles on an interior attack, they go see Marstown Rescue is always on our scene. And we go there for rehab. They have some of our people's baseline blood pressures, so they'll know when they get that when the person goes to rehab that they have an idea on their blood pressure. They check their blood pressure, their pulse. So I, so I, I wasn't aware them, that the CO can build up in your body over oh yeah. a period of time. You don't even know it. It's like anything, radiation, any of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why there's always an ambulance on scene. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's half the reason we go to CO calls and we can't find nothing because the thing's 10 years old and it's done maxed out. So now it just takes one part per million to set it off. Mm. It happens. Because mm -hmm. your detectors don't lose it either. The detectors build the memory for it and it keeps getting less and less to set it off. So. But yeah, I mean, that's. But we have been using our extractor quite regularly. You know, it's every three months anyway, right after any structure fire, which just takes out just about all the bad stuff. So if you walk into our station after a major structure fire, it don't smell like the fire for three weeks because of all the gear hanging there, because apparently that ain't healthy or cool anymore. <laughs> it's all. But that has been working. Good. Anything else on page two? <coughs> page three. Operating or repair maintenance supplies is almost double. Oh, Some of the categories were combined. Oh, okay. Yeah, you Got see it. the trip with all the X's? Yeah. Combine it too. Yeah. Got it. Been working with Tina with the new accountant. So I know how to label things and we don't lose track. Okay. <laughs> Fire tech funeral inspections, kind of on. What's that? Uh, the contractor stuff, 3000 or 5000 I guess the one before was only 4800 It was just one year was lower. Outside maintenance services? Yep. See how it was 4817 then 3000 now 5000 But that was right. the actual, so we adjusted the budget just to for the, the budget to reflect what the actual okay. is. We don't have the actual yet this year. Right. Okay. Page four. I like the bottom line total. Yeah. You trim any more of that? Probably not. <laughs> Just asking. I mean, there'll probably be some trimmed off anyway because of the new payroll. You know, we're not maxed out with people, so. All right. Well, good to see. They definitely won't go over that payroll. Maybe under. 
can ask you the same question we asked Bill. What, uh, what's not in there that you need? Well, what we've moved some of our stuff from the capital. I believe the biggest one was the I think that was the, the tanker we moved to 2021. Just because it's been brought to us that not recommended to put a cabin chassis under that poly tank mm -hmm. on W1 on the tanker. So we're going to be looking for, it's a strictly just going to be a tanker. You know, one purpose truck, not have a pump, like the, the new one, just mm -hmm. strictly water carry. They'll have a portable, they'll have some larger diameter hose on it. <coughs> and we're hoping by that time we may be able to buy it outright. With the capital replacement fund. Yep. That's kind of the goal on that. Yep. The only other thing we're looking at is we were talking when we met with Dan and Carol. I mean, Dan and Tina. <laughs> so I, I'm really old school, Tina. So so you, you still bringing Carol in here for that? Yeah. <coughs> is uh, one of the things that was brought to us which we don't have as a handicap bathroom. So we have been looking into that to kind of work on the station slowly. Um, we're looking at replacing the furnace. So that's something. And one, one of our guys wants me to bring in the People at energy testers. Which, Christmas Eve, Vermont? Yeah, which it wouldn't be good for us. Might be good to know where we're at. Well, I can tell you where you're at. Come down tomorrow night and I'll take my thermal imager and I'll show you where we're at. On the floor. Yeah. Anywhere you look in that building, any door openings, or the floor meets, the mm -hmm. walls, it's just the old stuff we have in the insulation upstairs. You know, I mean, we still got the blowing and cellulose, the little stuff, you know. I know what we need, but it's kind of hard to set a lot of money into it because I'm a big doors. Yeah. They went out quite a bit this weekend at different times. And then they go right back down, but when they go up, they let a lot of weather in. <laughs> so, but the, the furnace is a definite. Because we have been having problems with the classroom, the way it's done. You get prices on that yet? No, we I got one of the guys working on it now. Would you look at a heat pump? Would that be an efficient route to go? Or for to replace the furnace. I don't know, that's just the latest thing. Sometimes. I don't know if it's you get some different quotes, different ideas. Different setup. Mm -hmm. The way it but works. We'll let them. I, yeah, I pass it off. So that's not in there. The furnace is in here. No, no, that would come under the building improvements and stuff okay. like that. So, just that we were asked to think, you know, what we would be doing with that money this year or mm -hmm. next year. So this is just a couple of the ideas we had to bring, start working on the building again. Because we've got a lot invested in it thus far. And, you know, Charlotte said somebody made the comment we'll have a new building in 10 years. Well, I don't believe you. So. Well, let me counter that. I, I'm not going to put a time limit on it, but I'm going to say that as a town, if we don't forward plan our needs around this community, infrastructure needs, 
the fire station mm -hmm. and the village garage are two yeah. things that I have been talking about for a long time. But the needs of this community are growing. We're, we're putting more lipstick on, on a building that is just not going to sustain this community for a whole lot longer. No, it's I'm doing a good job for what it's doing. No criticism, launch that. I'm just saying you're trying to hold stuff to with band aids and these duct tape. The building itself is not going to suit the needs of this community forever, and we really need to look sooner or later at replacing even a new location. I, I, I understand high-heartedly, but I'm going to tell you, it won't be in 10 years. Okay. I mean, we've been talking about that building for over 10 now. I remember. It's all. Running in a pickleball court. It is where it is. We just put 40,000 in the room. <laughs> <and>, uh, <coughs> Foss uh, Soffits. You know. Put the highway guys in the fire department. The fire department in the highway. Oh, you go to <laughs> No. No. I get enough trouble now with my guys traveling the little distance they travel to the village. You want them running 100? <laughs> to get the Cochrane or with No. No. <laughs> you know. But so that's kind of it. Any questions for Denny? Any other questions? That's a good baseline. We just want to know the stuff that you know, you know. I know we got the tanker coming, we got the brush truck coming. You know, I think the brush truck was going to be first, but we swapped it. Okay. And um, I don't know if I let you guys know this now because I totally forgot, but start putting our money out to bid. We heard that before. Yeah, it's the one we're getting rid of. Huh? Getting, the one we're getting rid of. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one at the copper roof garage tonight? Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah, the only thing is, if it doesn't go to a fire department, I'm taking the four brand new scene lights off. Because it's about $2,800 worth of four lights. And they can go on our trucks. So, unless they're really putting in a good bid. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. Richard. <laughs> Building get beat up very much. How about you? <laughs> yeah. You're you always ready for us anyway. Well, I think I am. I don't have anything that jumps right out that's glaring anyway. But uh, only thing I will mention on office supplies. You want to talk about the, or the letter? Talk about the, the letter. This is pretty the first letter. <laughs> well, that's glaring. Yes. <laughs> the staffing. <laughs> you skipped right over that. Yeah, I did. I figured I'd say that to last, but because you needs. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see in the letter, it's a lot of this was generated through uh, our process of you know coming or developing the sergeants' positions. There's some concern that the sergeants will be not as available. Calls. I disagree. But I Sounds like they're still going to be. Yeah, they'll, they'll be available. But it, uh, there is a need at this point. We haven't had him on anybody in quite some time, probably 15 years at least. So, and the calls are evolving into a different kind of call. We spend our, a lot of hours just sitting with people. There's a lot of. Uh, we have so many services that are in the area now that you know, we're just yanked in all different directions. We've got two alternative schools. Today, for instance, we sat with a nine-year-old who was in our holding for two and a half, three hours till the parents got there. You know, things like that tie us up. So, yeah, there is a need. And again, I, you know, as I told Dan, I said, it'd be nice to have that position. But I don't even know if we could fill it because again, it's hard to find people. So, 
Could, could the yeah. position be filled <coughs> with, with mental, like a social worker or something, mental health? Because it does sound like you need a police I don't officer. believe that should come out of our no. our budget. You know, I don't think, and it wouldn't be under our purview, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it had, and, and we should utilize another officer if we, if we could find someone, so. What is your relationship with Lamont County Mental Health? Very good. I mean, we're constant. I mean, we talk almost every day. So, yeah, it's a very good relationship with them. They've talked a, a number of, over, well, it's been a number of years they've talked about embedding a worker in our mm -hmm. building, I've welcomed them to do that, but they've never been able, it's never materialized, they've never been able to do it, so I think they have a, a shortage of, of uh, manpower also, so. How do, how do other communities, I know Burlington's much greater than we are, but maybe other Virgins or some other communities like ours handle it? Yeah, uh, Burlington, of course, they're a whole different animal. I mean, right. they have all these departments and they get, I can't even tell you how that all works. What St. J? St. J, similar, but... They work with our kids. Yeah, right. I don't think they have as much, you know, as, as we do, as far as dealing with uh, mentally ill and people in need and, you know, that type of thing. So, I, I think that's a different that one. Yeah. Uh, three, my offices. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> We don't hear a lot, you know. We, we're up there a lot. <laughs> well, we yeah, you're driving up, up there. there. Yeah. So, but uh, but all the law enforcement agencies have just so much overtime. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. We're a little high in overtime right now of what we planned, and it is what it is. You know. It's, Do you think this letter maybe just uh, as a result of some of the challenges from the past year? Well, it's been coming. I mean, it's been discussed for a number of years. Dan and I discussed. Yeah, I, you know, we've we've you know, we've so. kicked it around, and we I think so I I have not fed this to them. I mean, this came from them. Yeah, yeah completely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm just saying, there's been a stress on. You've been a little sure, yeah. for Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you take an officer that's uh, sitting with somebody, and they get calls yeah. coming in, so we bring in somebody else, and then we need more calls. We just get buried for a while. Then you'll have days where. Nothing happens. Yeah. But if there was something that could be, you know, budget-wise, it doesn't come out of the police department, but even if, let's say, it's, I'm going to say social worker, I don't know about what it could be, but it's going to come out of the town budget. And it doesn't matter if it's your line item or this line item, but it would, it would help the police department if there was someone taking that responsibility that wasn't a police officer. I think you're on to, oh, sorry, I'm just, no, no. I think you're on to something. But I think that's where we could potentially work closer with Lamoille County Mental Health as a designated agency. They have a responsibility in that space. So <coughs> we could absolutely, um, we could write, you know, select board could write letters, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. We talk to our local legislators, those are areas to go. But I'm not sure I agree it would come from the town. It could, I mean, yeah. but well, I think as a designated agency, they do have some. So. When we bring somebody into custody like that, we're responsible. Nobody else is responsible. So we find out a lot. I don't think Eric could probably touch on that. But it's, they don't, you know, if it's not convenient for them, then you know that officer will sit on. We can't do anything. We can't kick them out the door. Mm -hmm. So we're stuck. They're ours, and it's frustrating. And, but this has been going on for years. You know, it's just gotten more and more. Out of that's the overview of the fact that you have a nine-year-old in that exactly. polling area, there are another set of rules that come into place. Timelines, what you can use for restraints. Don't think a nine-year-old is reading your Well, this is this this child <laughs> assaulted two people today. That's why so, we have yeah. so it, it's difficult. And right, right now, they mental health comes. They, we can't just take the officers out of the room and leave them out to, to watch them. But no, it does work in conjunction with the police department in these cases. But as far as providing security, it's not, it's not just holding. It's making sure that child is safe from themselves and not harming others. And mm -hmm. we can't just leave um, a mental health worker down there to, to do that for us. Yeah. The, the liability is on the police department. I mean, this school, for instance, is this particular child today, his parents live in Barrie. That's where he's from. They truck him all the way here 
to this school. Yeah. So if something happens, they're not available. I mean, so you know, you're going, well, I think we waited three hours today for the, for the mother to finally come. So you know, it's a perfect example of what we run into on a regular basis. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's all about the state. This could be a blanket letter sent to every agency. Well, I mean, I've, <coughs> I've, I've ranted to, you know, we, uh, we had a round table of uh, mental health, you know, state representatives. Everybody was there. I'm like, what do you, you know, they closed the state hospital and they never fixed it. Right. right. They put it upon us yeah. as police. Yeah, the hospital is yeah. In the hospital. <laughs> now, fortunately, the hospital has finally been able to cross train their people yeah. only because the medical board came down on them because they don't want police and I don't think police should be involved with somebody that's right. being held for evaluation you know mm -hmm. so but it was it took yeah. years how long has it been it's yeah. still not it's far from fixed so you know, it's, that's my frustration no, I, agree. So, I, I think what the letter highlights is you know I, I think you, know, you ask what the PD is going to need, and I think this is from the, 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 the officers over there, is they're going to need another officer. You know, um, they, we've talked about the town growing, services growing. Um, I think, you know, just in my discussions with them, you know, the nature of police work has changed, you know, even in the short time that I've been here. Um, there's more and more demands on them. There's more and more things that they're dealing on with a daily basis. There's a burnout factor, once again, that goes with that. Um, you know, and then there's officer safety. There's, you know, there's, there's all those liabilities that are growing on the PD all the time. It's there. You know, I think we've kind of known that it's coming for years. You know, we're pretty damn close to, to needing that additional manpower. Um, for everybody's safety. Now we have a balancing act of Correct. staffing per shift. <coughs> we all knew, no, at night, oftentimes your more severe calls, more dangerous, high, high, high risk calls come in. But the frequency of calls is when folks are awake and functioning and it's daytime. So you struggle with manpower That's balances the of the volume of calls on the day shift. Your day shift officers are getting like, six years of been retired. It was three to one. Mm -hmm. The number of calls the day shift handled compared to night shift, but you can't no. load your day shift to handle volume of calls and then leave your night shift with one guy, That's one right. officer. That's exactly right. So it, it, that balance is so hard to strike. You, you know, look at, we looked at statistics days of the week. Which ones were the higher volume call? I mean, all this stuff comes into play. Eventually, it takes another position. This is after There's we've cross trained and utilized Andy, who's supposed to be our front desk officer. He's running calls with the officer as a backup. So, you know, we're switching the phones over. So, you know, it's all a trickle effect. But, you know, but he, even with Andy, we get bogged down. So, and I take his place at the desk. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, you know, I know they, they put in for, you know, they like two. I think they would like the town to entertain one, you know, and we'll try it if we can get it funded, if we can fill it, that's another issue. Right. At least it's a it's a, a process. Step in the right direction. Yeah. What, I was wondering if anybody knows the increase in our population in the last has it in, The four population or five years. itself has not increased that much. It's the type of population that we have has is, is changed dramatically mm -hmm. in my 34 years. I mean, it's completely different today. Completely. I'm just thinking because we have all the uh, um, Brooklyn Street the development there, and then you out on Route yeah. 12, the Brook. Yeah, there, there, no, there, are, there are no bearing on us at all. They're no, they're, they're not our workload. Our workload is Industrial Avenue, Copley Hospital, any anywhere there's services, you know, Washington Highway, General. That's where we're spending most of our time, in the school, high school. And, uh, yeah, but incidents gone up more in high school too. Yeah, our resident in, increase of our, you know, buildings, you know, residents, there's been really very little impact on us. Jersey Way, you hardly even know that's there. You know, I mean, we just have nothing there, you know, so. Uh, my daughter actually just bought a place over there last year. And, the realtor says, well, you know, and the police are, I said, yeah, we're never having to come here because <laughs> you know, it's a quiet neighborhood, so. Yeah. 
just, I'm just different that populations. Even though the, we have an increase of population, so there's a possibility that with an increase of population. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, of course. Yeah. But, you know, our immediate impact has not been. I think our population has gone up not much. maybe 500 in the last 10 years. Right. So, mm. Something um, like that. Yeah. It's the type that's really impacted us. Has, have you seen a little de decrease since the shelters opened? At the moment, we had, they, we, they were basically had moved to different areas before the shelter opened, so we managed to, wherever they went. I mean, they finally left uh, about a week ago. But I didn't know if they were, the ones that we dealt with were even over there, so. Yeah. Right. But mainly it's, you know, like I said, it's the need for services, you know, mental illness, uh, just plain disruptive children, lack of parenting, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's really, it, it's, it keeps our plate full. Hmm. All right, let's go through the line items here. Page one. So Richard, you didn't build anything in then? No, we did not. No, I did not. No, it's, this is just regular operating. Right. Mm -hmm. what, would it, what would a budget increase be if you put another officer on? $100,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I worked it out before I came on you dads. Yeah, that would be salary. I'm going to say that's a That's, yeah. that's a, a fairly... Um, yeah. Inexperienced person with a family plan for insurance and all that, so it's yeah, it's a fairly no accurate figure. Right. No, no other. There's no equipment built into that. The no. Like no, no there's no. Nothing. So if you look at the overtime line or the personnel, you look at the actual for 18, 19. Now, some of these do, there are things that impact us like vacancies, right, uh, and whatnot. But the overtime cost. For 1819 is 101000 yes. That's always been kind of a, a, a dollar figure that moving target. Yeah, yeah. When, when it approaches the cost of another officer is the time that we start to look. That is what we use for in the past. Right? Mm -hmm. If you look um, in your orange colored sheets, the second one in, there is an overtime projection that I did uh, taking actual overtime hours by person. For 17, 18, 18, 19, and average those two years to get what I used for this year's budget. Having a full staff is having a positive yeah. impact on the line item, however. Yeah, well, having full staff has actually kept our overtime in check, if you can believe that. I mean, it's. Yes. Right, it helps. Yes. Not to jinx the chief, but that's not. Oh, I mean, it's not unusual to have an officer out for, or for one reason or the other. Oh yes, yeah. true. No. True. Yeah. It could be training. It could be anything. Injuries. Yeah, adding an officer doesn't mean we're going to decrease that overtime. Not a lot, no. but it will impact it some. Yeah. It'll subsidize it a little. <coughs> right. Anything else on page one? <coughs> page two. I mean, other than that, position is pretty flat. It is. It's 3%. Which is 25 hours or 30 hours for all officers? We're still at 25, but they think that's going to change. The full time. The sheriff's department, they they go on 30 hours. Yes, yeah. really right. Because well, you have part time, so you might have to be easier that way. Yeah. But they have mandates on us as such now that you can't do it all in 25 hours. So it's, you know, all of our guys have more than all of our officers have more than 25. 
Are you going to see an increase in your training as a result of two new sergeant positions? Well, we've been training? developing sergeants, so this, this, no. It should be pretty much, I think the training is going to run pretty much where I have it set. Okay. You know, the 7200 reflects from last year, reflects that, you know, they've been, we've been trying to prepare officers for that, so. We do save a lot on, you know, because we got a lot of uh, certified instructors in house, yeah. too. So, anything else on page two? Three. Again, IT services, we do have a a new live scan purchased through our lease. We haven't received it yet, so that it'll be a little bump there. That's, that's what that's for, the annual payments and, and the maintenance, along with all the other programming plans that we're involved with. That's pretty good. <coughs> The EQ lease is going to go up a little bit, but that's uh, <coughs> coming anyway. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, of course, we skipped a year to get them paid, so we maintained just three payments. Right. You know, any given time. That you may see in the next couple of years, and we need another a fourth. Another Tahoe, right? Well, whatever we get. Yeah, a truck, yeah. yeah. Well, we're right now, as long as, because like I said, we skipped a year, so we're starting to feel it a little bit, probably in the oldest Tahoe. And uh, they'll might be replacing that one. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, don't take long for repairs to get out of hand real quick, so. Right. More than what a lease would be on this. So, but we're, we're managing, yeah, I think they're running, <coughs> I think the trucks, like, each have, like, between 35 and 40,000 miles. And the new Tahoe's got probably 15,000. So. What's the oldest one have? Uh, about, I think he's 98,000. Yeah. That's the K9, so that's Jason's. That's what I thought Jason told me, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be pretty close to 100,000. Yeah. Just put a pile of money into it, so. Yeah, yeah. he told me that. Keep us going until summer, I think, so. Yeah. New brakes and everything, so. Yeah. <coughs> so I guess we don't have to ask you what you need. It's pretty evident. All right. So any other questions for Richard? I was wondering what a hundred thousand um, dollar increase in the overall budget does to the tax rate. Um, well, when we raise one cent on the tax. Um, Sixty thousand. It raises like sixty three thousand dollars. So you're you know, you're looking at you know closer to two cents on the tax rate. Penny and a half. And that also depends on grand list growth too. Right. If the right. grand list grows it might so, be not as much. So last year I think you know we were four and a half percent on our overall budget, but our municipal tax rate I think was two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. Something like that. So um, it's you, you know, there's some offsets there too. The, the grant list is growing, so that that is an offset for us, a positive offset. But it's been like this for a long time. It's been the same for a long time, without much change. Yes. And I think we've needed a change for now, but you've made it work. I'm just thinking back. I mean, we authorized the the last position that we have, which brought us where we are. Boy, it has to be 16, 17 years ago. I did it under the COPS program way back when. Yeah. So, Clinton administration, so. Hmm. Yeah, time goes quite fast. 
But we've always struggled to try to keep full staff too. We've you know, always been down to position. Yeah, we've been down to just yeah. <laughs> since Dan's been here, I've been down to position. So, but we finally are. We're up there. That's pretty normal though to be down. On yeah, this. yeah. Every department. Yeah. 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 Are, are, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, room for another officer in the building. Yes. Yeah. Let's go back and start utilizing part of the conference room again. But yeah. How about the building? Building, you know, we keep putting money in, you know, we're working on the windows still. I think we got four or five more windows. It's getting a lot better though. Need some paint, you know, that type of thing. There's always stuff we can do, so. We're working that little by little. The roof is good. So. But yeah, we got all the other, we put in nine windows this last summer, so. There's no other surprises, Wayne. We got a new furnace in there too. <laughs> Our furnace is pretty new, and, you know, yeah. It's been reworked a number of times. They, they finally got it straightened out. Is it so. straightened out? Yeah. Air system, wish I could knock on wood, but as far as I know, that's going to be that's straightened out. So, no, we're in good shape, I think, as far as mechanical stuff. And good. For now. So, all the future planning and building site infrastructure. Yes. You add staffing and you add vehicles to the fleet. That parking lot is horribly undersized. Yes. And you have your staff. Coming in their personal vehicles. I mean, it is tight to turn the vehicle around in there as it is. We've already revamped the parking lot once to it and gave ourselves a like two or three month spot. There is no more revamping that parking lot. Danny's yeah, still here, yeah, okay. So we need no, we do a, a public safety bill then. All right, here we go. Turn it into a pickleball core. Just throw it out there for food for thought as we right. increase the needs of the community. We need to identify the infrastructure. Different location. And you missed it. Down by the new mobile. When that building across the road was for sale. Carbon. You, 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 know, you, know, know. you guys missed it. Mm. Uh, they didn't want it. <laughs> we haven't missed it yet. But oh, we didn't miss it. Still there. It wasn't for sale back then. It's still there. He said it was, but he couldn't sell it. But he wanted I'm to lease it to it. It's okay. I know. <laughs> but I heard there. it was for I sale. Saw, I was here that Everything he's got is for sale. <laughs> Everything going to sale. But you got to think, think about it too. That building over there, if that was turned into a fire station slash uh, police fire rescue. rescue, rescue altogether. Imagine them all trying to be out of that building at once. Rescue, all you'd have to talk with Copley. Right. Because their funding makes it that building has to stay there and that organization has to stay there. Yeah. Unless you no longer want funded from Copley Hospital. So it's kind of nice to get it out where when they come out they got an open area to get out and get they out. Want, they want that building anyway. They want it so I don't have to have a rescue the building for us. You we pay for the building. Copley doesn't give us any money. No. no. They want the campus. They want the building for their campus. They like to get us out. They like We're already bought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk again, I'm sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, next. Group warrant. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. TA report. Couple things off of me. Um, the Thanksgiving gift cards, I didn't change what you guys authorized me to do last year. I hope that's okay. I didn't bring it back to you. I was going to ask about that. It's so we, you know, we did the same $40 and let the person pick the place where they wanted to go. I like it. So as long as everybody's comfortable with that, it's what we did again. And I, a lot of employees really appreciate that. It's a, it's a nice gesture on behalf of the select board to do that. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that that's what's still going on. And, didn't change anything that you guys from what we talked about last year. So just so everybody knows. Um, just a little bit, and this really covers a little bit more of what Kevin's doing out there. We still have three roads that are closed. Um, Coal Hill, and I think you're going to try to work on that this week. On that on Wednesday. Um, um, right um, near the bridge, right? Just on the other side of the bridge. Uh, the covered bridge. Road. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Sterling Valley and then Mud City Loop on the Mud City Loop one is where we're looking to get the temporary bridge from the state, still working with them. Um, just so everybody understands, 
Right now, nobody's cut off or isolated because of that, that bridge or the culvert up on, on Mud City Loop. Um, I think the state probably has it in their inventory to give us one for right now, but if something happens statewide where they need that, you know, there's the opportunity that they come back and get it because we're not shutting anybody off. So it's, it's kind of like managing their inventory for what they have available. Um, I also did send the select board reports on both culverts mm -hmm. um, that are out there. So the, the Mud City Loop one, of course, you know, is, is definitely has to do something, but it's relatively inexpensive repair. When I say inexpensive, nothing's inexpensive for bridges. Um, and then the, the, the Gels Road's back open, and I think, you know, once again, um, structurally, there's nothing wrong with that culvert that's there. Um, there's water that gets around that culvert, and the, the engineer's recommendation is that we put head walls on it, wing walls, to keep that infiltration from getting around that. Um, and I'll come back with, we, we do have money in the, the bridge reserve to, to do those repairs. So we'll get back to the board as we move back forward on those. But that's the, the overall right now from the storm damage and then getting stagecoach paved and ready for winter, I think, is kind of where we're at on that. So. Make sure you have that in there, Andrew, that Gilts Road, the culvert is okay. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. Because there's a lot of difference of opinion right. around that, as you know. That was an engineer's report, not our report. It was something you know, that an engineer went and inspected for us um, to, to make sure. But there's no holes in it. There's nothing in and even the engineer's um, opinion was that the water is getting around the structure. And the head wall. And, and a head wall will help alleviate a lot of that. So um, that's really it for me. So. That'll bring buckwheat in here next meeting. <laughs> Well, you know, I can board in the engineer before if you like that. So, um, but it, you know, the, the engineer did a great job. Got down inside the culvert, inspected it, took pictures, um, just so that we have a you know a good baseline on what's there. So. Okay. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Select board concerns, Judy. I was wondering about LCPC. We haven't had a chance to meet with them yet. I think we've. We got to pin down a date. The plan is for Chris and I to meet with them again and uh, talk about how we're going to proceed. We just haven't had a chance to in the last couple of weeks. We'll do it. I've been going back and forth. Um, I spoke to Caleb the other day and texting with Brian, but we haven't had a date yet. We haven't. Right? We, we will. That would be within the next month. Hopefully. 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 Yeah. Hopefully. Um, I'm going away for a week, but I'm going to do it you could, around. You can do it by phone. Nah, yeah. probably not. I know. Okay. But good question. We, we need to put, get on with it. Thank you. Chris. Hi. Brian. Hi. Eric. Also. And I am too. I was going to ask about the Thanksgiving thing. <laughs> That's good. All right. Any other business? I know that we had our executive session to discuss the plan on the plan of the evaluation of the officer. Order for you that the provision of title one section 3083 of the last statutes. Thank you, Dan Hilden. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed?